how to keep your woman attracted to you long term. That is a subject of today's podcast on the Warrior Kings podcast, where we usually cover mindset, masculinity, and marriage. However, one of those parts of marriage is keeping that attraction. And today I'm speaking with a special guest, Eric Castaneda. He reached out to me over Instagram and he said, hey, you know what, you're going on the right direction. He gave me a couple books. And then I was like, you know what, dude, you know what you're talking about. This guy very evidently is an expert in the field. He's coached other men um, in dating. And so I wanted to pick his brain on, hey, how do you keep attraction going? Because that's essential, very important parts of marriage. Some parts of the podcast, especially with this political climate, might sound bad. But personally, I don't care. All I care about is what keeps my marriage strong. It doesn't matter to me how it sounds. As long as I'm happy, the wife's happy, the marriage is strong and intact, our kids are good, I'm for whatever truth helps that. So we get really, really into the nuts and bolts on how to keep your woman attracted to you. So men, if you're about to try and enter a relationship, if you're in a relationship, you want to keep that spark going, you want to remain attractive to your woman, this is an episode you're really going to want to listen to. it. So let's get into it. All right. Well, thank you, Eric, for uh, for joining me, man. Like, I, I really appreciate it. And we met essentially through uh, through a DM because you had seen my post and then you had seen all the I, I don't know if you've read the comments, but there's a lot of people commenting yeah. about like, no, nah, this is different. And I was like, I don't know, man, like in my world, just generally speaking, when I talk to other dudes, it's all logical. Like, it's just problem solving, problem solving, problem solving. That's that's it. Like, I've never once called a dude just to be like, hey, man, how are you? I'm like, <laughs> right, 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 right. That's how. That's not how men communicate. That's not how yeah. we communicate in general. That's not mm-hmm. how we communicate. Um, but yeah, so you had shot me the book, and then you'd let me know. Of, uh, now you're in real estate, which I think is fantastic, and eventually I need to get into that space. Uh, but before that, you said you'd, you'd let me know that you're coaching other guys. Can you can you go into that and like how you started there? Yeah, well, I started because I was lonely, okay. and then I learned how to. Learn. I learned how to meet women. We called it through code approach uh, mm. at malls, cafes, bars, clubs, lounges, women walking down the street. Okay. And then eventually, eventually, I got good enough to to where I met a mentor of mine, okay. and he had been a dating coach for men for a long time. And he, I, I paid to go to one of his seminars. Mm-hmm. And eventually, he saw that I was good enough, and he asked me to help assist him teaching okay. his students. Dang, that's mm-hmm. that's pretty cool, man. So, was he a mentor of yours before you started doing the cold approach stuff, or you you guys like met when you were like me? I know when I just I have maybe been a, co- a code approaching a couple of months before I met him, mm-hmm. but um, once I met him, my success almost instantaneously doubled. Okay. And then and then I was under him for a couple of years. Okay. Oh wow, for years too. So you were you were in this yeah. for a long time. Oh yes. Okay. Oh yeah. All right. And so uh what I'm curious about is like uh when you started going out, what was I guess in a way it's uh like between um approaches, like were you assessing how it went or like how did you find the dynamic to, to talk to a woman and then stay um stay in the group for a while like is that stuff you had researched or youtube videos or well yes um in between approaches i didn't i mean i would kind of assess Mm. but what we would really do is go back sometimes we would film the interactions like hidden camera and then we would go back and break everything down uh in the seminar and we would like film each other Okay. So we would go to like Venice Beach. I'm originally from Los Angeles. So we would go to Venice Beach and we would have a hidden mic on us and then we would film. Somebody would hold the camera and then we would film ourselves interacting. So my mentor, we would go back and break all the interactions down. And that's kind of how we would do it. Because his big thing was not to, when you're in the field, we call it being in the field. When you're in the field, you don't want to overthink. When you're talking to women, just be yeah. in the moment, be present, and then go back and and uh, so look later. over. That's what you did. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Just for and then just for clarification, the mics and the cameras are specifically just for your betterment. I'm assuming. Right? Yes. 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 We cool. <laughs> use them on YouTube or anything like that. We yeah. just took them to uh, back to the classroom and broke everything down. Yeah. You should have said this. Uh, you actually did really well here. Okay, next time say this. And it's not like a script. It's like, okay, your energy was off. Okay, be more playful here. 
okay, she said this, you should have said that, things like that. Mm, okay, okay. Um, and then what I was curious, so that sounds like when you were with your mentor, what about like before your mentor? Like how did you get good enough by yourself without the mentor to, to a point where, where you did meet your mentor, like you guys were, you saw your success right away? Um, I was okay before my mentor. I just went out. I was so lonely. I was so tired of being lonely. Mm. Uh, I hadn't had a girlfriend in like a year. Uh, and I just went out to the mall. I never forget it. I was living in Orange County, uh, Cerritos. I mean, not Cerritos, Los Alamitos, which is like the okay. outskirts of Orange County, Los Angeles. And I would go to the Cerritos mall and it was maybe about five, 10 minute drive. And I would just, I knew a little bit, but I didn't, I didn't have all the information. There was a guy back in the day named David D'Angelo and I would just go mm. up to girls at the mall and I would just, I don't remember what I would say because I was 19 years old. Yeah. I'm 35 now. Okay. So uh, that was a long time ago. But I would just actually got some dates. I don't remember what I said. But basically, you know, hey, I'm Eric. I thought you were cute. I want to come say hello. Something like oh, that. Like direct. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. That's cool. Because uh, I've heard of like other stuff where you're supposed to uh, like open or like talk to them like about something kind of random and then you kind of go into it later but for you it was it was a direct like hey i think you're really good looking or i think you're pretty just wanted to introduce myself like that kind of the that was just feel yeah because indirect for me was never congruent uh mm, it just never yeah. felt right for me i'm a very direct person and i think i did try the indirect once or twice it was and like, this feels I, weird. I, didn't, I didn't like it because it's like i feel like i had a hidden agenda and yeah. i don't like to i don't like to communicate that way mm. Uh, so I, and I would be talking to the girl about whatever, something random. And in my, in my, in my insides, I'm like, I just want to tell her she's cute and we should go out on a date with me. And can I have her number? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. hundred <laughs> <laughs> like, percent. You know, so yeah. Yeah. Because women know when you, when you talk to them, especially a woman is a woman is attractive, she but gonna it, know. She knows. they know they've been hit on a bunch of times before they've talked, before you've talked to them. Yeah. Oh, makes sense. Makes sense. So that's kind of cool, uh, actually, because I had I had actually uh, I looked into that like a little bit and then I, I did go to a seminar. And then like literally the day after that we executed on the seminar, I met my wife and then I was like, well, right. I'm good. Like, <laughs> I <don't need> right. <laughs> <I> just... <laughs> yeah. And it was, it was funny because the only time, the only reason I was able to go to that one seminar to like learn and I, the reason I wanted to learn is because I was um, not necessarily to like meet a woman, but I know it was a fear point for me. It was like going up sure. to someone random and just starting a conversation was, sure. um, was terrifying. And I was, I was in the state of mind. Uh, I was doing, I was doing like network marketing at the time and they're like, you need to face your fears and all, all the things you want are behind your fear. And I was like, well, this is something that scares me. I should probably handle this. So definitely, I'm in the I'm in the, I'm in the same boat, and it's funny you mentioned network marketing because I used to be in network marketing I used to before. Be, yeah. <laughs> yeah, before I started, I was in a company called ACN. Uh, I've heard of uh, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They sold like a phone service and stuff like that. Mm. And so, yeah, they they I would actually, funny enough, we would have to go out. This was be, like really before social media became big. Yeah. We would go to the malls and try to recruit people. We would go to the malls and the bookstores and try to recruit people for our yeah. team. So I was kind of familiar with the code approach, mm. but I, not in the not in the the context of trying to trying to meet women. So when I went to go code approach, I was kind of already already used to it. I just didn't know how to speak womanese, as they say. Yeah, it's um, that's definitely. I'm gonna drop that down and something to ask you about later because that is uh, important. Um, in, in my experience too, like part of it was because when you get in there, for those of you guys who have never been in, like get in there and there's all this personal development stuff, which is also just, just generally good information. And then part of it is like some of these tapes are listening to these older guys like Holden Bugs. I think Jim Rohn used to be in network marketing. Mm -hmm. And then they talk about their experiences and they're like, now I just talk to everybody and I recruit everybody. And like, I would go up to people at the mall and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, dude, if that's what a successful guy did, that's what I got to go do. Exactly. Um, and so I, I actually, I tried doing that for, uh, for a little while and I wasn't very successful with it, but then I did notice that when I was doing that, I would be, I was like intensely nervous. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Tar. So tar. yeah. And, and, uh, that's part of what prompted me to, to go do that. Um, yeah. And then Definitely. long story short, I met, I met my wife. Um, awesome. 
what I, <laughs> what I'm what I'm kind of curious about too though is like as uh, my understanding for like this uh, my understanding is when you're talking to a woman right there's all these like lines you can say and whatnot but what I've learned later on is that it you can say lines but a lot of it depends on like who's delivering like who's the man behind the lines I guess is that sure. do you find that true in in, uh, in in or did you find that true in your coaching like it helps a lot if like you're already established or well built you have strong values and then you're delivering lines versus like you're just trying to use the lines i don't know if absolutely that makes absolutely no no absolutely uh if you're just starting out then you can build to that point because i um i was telling i used to tell my students at the end of the day this is about building confidence and self-esteem mm -hmm. not just confidence because confidence you can fake confidence that's true that's yeah. the problem the problem with confidence you can fake it the the thing about self-esteem is as corny as it sound is true love you love yourself but not in a way where you're full of yourself where it's like whether this woman rejects me or not i still like me as a person yeah i don't think about it the entire day actually mm -hmm. after she rejects me i forget it in that moment that's that's self-esteem and then i still have enough uh I still can go talk to another woman without thinking about the other woman who rejected me, right? So my mentor used to tell me, never get caught up in your success or failure because oh, that's good advice. Just, be, just because one woman likes you doesn't mean the next woman is going to like you. And just because one woman rejects you doesn't mean the next woman is going to reject you. It, mm. it, it doesn't mean anything. As long as you have that confidence and self-esteem, it Just comes and go. You just do your part. Okay. I like that. Yeah. That's that's pretty interesting because um, what what I'm also looking at like what one of the books you had recommended to me the um, this one I just finished the uh, hold on to your hold on to your yeah just, yeah just finished it one of the one of the tents in there and I think in the way of superior man too which are mm -hmm. just fantastic books for guys to read in general. Is Absolutely. the idea that you it's almost like a self validation like I don't need to go out and be validated by this person like I'm cool with who I am. And mm -hmm. that's, that's it. That's how it is. And then whether or not they react to it, however they react to it is. That's it. Like, exactly. You can have your own reaction. I'm cool with who I am. That's that's kind of the main point, I guess. Exactly. And, and when you're like that, it's more attractive because you're not attached to the outcome It's counterintuitive. A lot of guys. Uh, when I used to coach, they really didn't get it. Um, but they don't understand there's a certain behavior that makes you an attractive person. It's not your looks. It's not your status as far as uh, what you have, what you drive, uh, how tall you are. All that is the uh, – all that is uh, not extra, but it's all uh, surface layer. It's all superficial. Mm, okay. And, and what we talked about on that post, women – women – uh, are emotional beings. So you can get women, you can attract women without having all that stuff. Why? Because it's how you make them feel. Mm. You have to understand that I've dated a lot of women who, I'm from Los Angeles, man. All the celebrities live <laughs> it's, out it's, it's, a competitive, it's a competitive dating market. Yeah. Los Angeles, New York City, Miami. The mm. top three most competitive dating markets and I've had success in all three. Why? I've dated my ex fiance she uh, this is no lie she would tell you this she had a guy before she met me she's a business journalist she knows wow. richard branson she knows all these people she has yeah. a lot of connections um she had a guy who was making 30 million dollars a year chasing her and she chose that man over me let me tell you something i've never seen 30 million dollars in my life mm. and the reason why she i said well why did you choose him over me, she said, "He's boring. You're fun. You I mean, get me." She chose you over him. She chose, yeah. Sorry, she oh, chose. Yeah, I was like, oh, wait, that's not <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay. She chose me over him because she's like, "He's boring. We have more of a connection. You make me laugh." Mm, and yeah. a, and a woman, and that's what I'm saying. Like I used to tell my students, "Don't worry about your looks. Don't worry about you. Do that stuff for you as a man and to take care of your family. But yeah. you don't need that to attract a woman." Because mm. if you're using that stuff to attract a woman, you're gonna attract the wrong type of woman. Oh, we wanna true. attract that's we true. wanna attract high quality women mm. who love us for us, whether we have 
something or not. Those are the type of women that you want. And you can do that because, again, women are not like men. Men were visual. There's an old saying I used to tell my students, mm -hmm. and it's true. Men fall in love through their eyes. Women fall in love through their ears. If yeah. you can make a woman feel a certain way, doesn't matter what you have or what you don't have, you can still attract beautiful women, period. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Way to feel. Uh, that was, that's kind of interesting you brought that up because uh, at the time I met my wife, actually, I was pretty broke. Um, right. Was a national athlete. And I did, I guess, in a way I had status because I was like I was on the national team. Um, sure. But the way she was raised and the way, what her mom had told her was like, don't date a dude with money because if he blows all the money, then you're fucked. <laughs> right, right, but, right. But what she said was like, find a guy who works hard. And so like, I know myself and I work pretty freaking hard. And then um, on we, we started dating and on the fourth date, she's like, hey, do you want to go out? And I straight up like, I was literally like, no money. And we have a few mm -hmm. days till paycheck day. And so I messaged her and I was like, hey, you know, um, I'm just gonna be transparent with you. I don't have money to go see you right now. Like we can wait until after the 15th and then we're mm -hmm. good. But if you know, if you're dating me for money, you need to establish guy, like I'm not your dude. And um, I appreciate it. We had a lot of fun, but you know, it's, it's really up in the air for you now. Cause um, I, I think I told her, I told her on the second date, like I was interested in her more than just a friend. Like we were, right. you know, I was pretty serious about this. And then on the fourth date, I was literally like, I don't got money, <laughs> but but that being said, we're married now. We got two kids. And uh, when I tell other guys a story, they're just like, holy cow, that's pretty cool. She stayed with you, even though you didn't get the yeah. money. I was like, I know. She's fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Here's the thing, man. Let me tell you something. At the time I started dating my ex-fiance, I didn't have any money either. Bro, mm -hmm. I told you, she lived in Singapore. She, I met her when she was in Los Angeles on vacation with her twin sister. She paid for most of those tickets for me to come see her. Mm -hmm. I had no, I had no money when yeah. I went to she That 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 ticket is not cheap. Round trip from that's LA nice. to Singapore, that's fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, she would pay for that, bro. Dang, so I, she, she I told you her, out there. She would just fly she you out, out there. I told her like you told your wife. I said, listen, I was working. I was looking working at some shitty job at the time, mm -hmm. and I said, listen, like I like you. I know I said I was going to come see you, but like can you pay for my ticket. I don't have enough money, dude. I wasn't even making fifteen hundred dollars every two weeks. She mm. said, you know what she said? No problem, of course. Dang, I just flew out there. And here's, let me say this one last thing to the guys listening to this. Money will not save you. Yeah. Status will not save you. Let me tell you why. Let me give you an example. Okay. Tom Brady's wife, Tom Brady's wife still divorced oh, him. Oh, that's a good point. Look, look, look at Will, look at uh, Dr. Dre's wife left him. Mm -hmm. Look at Will Smith. Look at what oh, Jada Pickett is doing with Will Smith. That's a closer. Dude, money, money, and status and look won't save you. If Tom Brady's wife, the greatest quarterback of all time, if his wife will leave him, what what chance does the average guy have? Yeah. Don't rely on status. Don't rely on anything superficial. Rely on your character as a man, and rely on your ability to be charming and charismatic, because that is what's going to keep your woman long term. Women, and here's another thing. When a woman is beautiful enough, she's dealt with high status men all the time. Mm. She, she doesn't need your money. She's dealt. She can get a man with money. Yeah, I've literally had beautiful women tell me, like, choose me over. I'm not even exaggerating, Chris. I've had beautiful women choose me over millionaires. Well, yeah, you, in your one example, yeah, she. You, she yeah, you. she's not even the first one. Mm. There's other women that I've dated after our relationship. Oh, a little bit. Relationship ended. I'm talking about recently who mm. uh, they high status dudes with money, and, and and they get used to it. Beautiful women are used to guys with money hitting on them. We mm. have Instagram. They can DM these guys. These That's guys true. DM That's them. True. Don't worry about looking status and all that. Again, I tell my students, do that for yourself. Society mm. has lied to us. You don't need that. What you yeah. need is confidence and self esteem to okay. keep to get to get a woman and to keep a woman. You don't need money. You don't need money. Is for you. And your children, if you want to have a family, and to take care of them, but not to attract the woman. Mm. For sure. Um, yeah. Okay. Something I want to get into also, because mm -hmm. I like that explanation. It, it's about you, and um, yeah, you're you're essentially like the uh, you're the guy you have to please. You shouldn't be trying to do this to, to please someone else. So, Absolutely. Um, I I like that a lot. What I was kind of what I was curious about was what would you if you had to break down what makes a guy attractive 
in sure. like six steps. So six things guys can focus on to keep themselves really attractive. Because I think as a father and what I see a lot of is like, usually guys are like semi good looking or they have, you know, they're on trajectory when they're in their twenties, whatever. And they have all these things that attract them to them. And then, then they get complacent and then they lose a lot of this stuff. And some of it is like, like maintenance, like I'm take, helping take care of the kids, you know? So there's, mm-hmm. there's, almost like a double side of or double set of skills where it's like, okay, you have to learn how to take care of the home life and keep this running long term. But the flip side is you, you don't want to lose this attraction part either. Like this is yeah. also important and uh, makes mm-hmm. things fun and exciting for your wife. So I was sure. wondering what were, what would you break down these six fundamentals as for a guy to stay attractive or it doesn't have to be six, but like sure. you know, something around. Sure, sure. Uh, I would say number one, um, you got to have boundaries. That boundaries. keeps you attractive. That's a good one. You got to have boundaries. That's, that's the number one thing. Okay. Um, be, being able to express uh, um, being able to say no okay. to your wife, uh, staying on your mission. Look, here's the truth, man. Wife, girlfriend, women never truly want to. Oh, be your number one priority. That's <laughs> it, just it got a, they say on. that. Well, one second here. It got out like right when you got into the juice of what you're saying. You're like, women, oh, sorry, sorry it, got, it got cut up. <laughs> oh, sorry, I, I was saying boundaries, right? So boundaries, yeah. uh, being able to uh, say no and keep your priorities your priority because women say the that they priorities. want to be your world, but it's not true. It's not what they're attracted to. A woman wants a man who's on his mission. They want to be important to you. But they don't want to be number one. That's the biggest lie in society. Yeah, you know, um, it's I just have personal experience with that twice. So, uh huh. <laughs> yeah, it's not true, man. It's just not true. So I say that's the number one thing to stay attractive is stay on your mission. Okay. Um, and and have boundaries with that, right? So things that are truly important to you, right? Mm-hmm. You're not gonna give that up for your family. I'm talking about as Nuts. far as exactly, <laughs> right? And that's why I love that book that's because. Good. It's true. It's it, it. What works? You you gotta have boundaries with your with your with your lady, with your wife, okay. with your girlfriend. W- would you say keeping boundaries and then being on your mission is a second point, or is that a, a point underneath boundaries? Uh, okay, I would say that's a point underneath okay. boundaries. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's all one big point. Then. It's kind of um, intertwined, but basically the same thing. Okay. So boundaries. Um, yeah. One point five is keep your keep your mission. <laughs> yeah, one point five exactly. 1.5, okay. Right, because if, if you get off your if you get off your mission, that means that that boundary was weak, and somebody can come in and and deter you, mm. and and that means you have a hole in your boundary. Okay. Right. If you tell, if you tell yourself, like Chris, you tell yourself, "Hey, man's coaching. This is this is what I want to do. This is my passion." Uh-huh. And if your wife was to come in and say, "No, I don't want you to do that anymore," you're like, "Hold on." Like I love you, baby, but this is this is what I'm here to do. Mm. You know, that's yeah. staying on your path. That's staying on your path. And if it's not um, destructive, it's that's okay, good. right? Yeah. And a lot, a lot of men, I've seen that they get off because their woman is not happy with what they do and things like that. And it's like, dude, if that's what you're meant to do, do it. Yeah. Don't let anybody take you off your path because if that relationship ends, then you're mad at yourself. One hundred percent. And. Um... No. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree uh, wholeheartedly. So that's important. Oh, yeah, and so the other thing I would say is, yeah, you gotta, uh, you gotta keep the romance, man. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta uh, always court your woman. Never stop courting your woman, man. Well, what would be like an example of courting your woman, just in case? Because I've, I've heard that a lot, but like, what does that mean to court? Sure. Woman? Yeah, yeah. You come home one day, baby. Let's say you guys have kids, mm. baby. I got us a babysitter. My mom's going to watch the kids. I'm going to drop the kids off. When I come back, get dressed. Where are we going? Doesn't matter. Get dressed. Mm, That's okay. courting her. You, you're keeping yeah, yeah. it unpredictable. You're keeping, it's fun. You, you, you guys should have a, a, a date night uh, once a week. You should go out and do new things. What, what's new? Google it. What's new in the city? What, whatever city you're in. Okay. What new activities? Mm. Surprise, surprise your lady. Right. You know. Go on a little mini vacation if you can afford it every couple of months. I'm not talking about to Hawaii or anything like that. Mm. Just something that's romantic. Yeah. Like they said, keep the court your woman. It, it, it's fun for her. Yeah. You know, it's fun for her. You got to keep your woman interested, man. Mm. 
what, you know, I, oh, go right. ahead. What I was going to say was something that was uh, a little bit more nuanced that I think some guys may have missed was uh, number one is I've heard like you're, if you tell your woman in advance, let's say you tell her that at the, the beginning of the day, then she's been thinking about that all day. So by the time it's dinner time, it's like awesome versus mm -hmm. you tell her like an hour before, then she only has an hour to ruminate on it. Mm -hmm. So um, I liked what you had said, like, oh, just put on a dress on. It doesn't matter where we're going. Just when I come home, everything's handled. Just get a dress on. Um, exactly. Number one is it, it shows you planned it in the head. And then number mm -hmm. two, it leaves room for her imagination to uh, to yeah, try and fill yeah, in the yeah. blank, right? Because you're not saying like, oh, we're going to this exact spot at this and I'm going to order you. Like th that leaves nothing to the imagination. So, yeah. So what a new spot, like we're going to just put the dress on. So she's like, oh, where are we going? And so that helps um, that it, I would say it's a little nuanced point that I think for you is already like second nature. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And um, and look, you don't have to do it every time, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's just it's just being a little spontaneous. Um, slightly unpredictable okay. it's fun for your lady and it's like oh we're, it's, it gives her that feeling like oh we're dating again oh this is how you, you know a lot of guys right uh, and you hear women say this in the beginning you did everything for me you did this this and this and this yeah and now you don't even do this this and this and that right and it's mm -hmm. like maybe here's another mm -hmm. example maybe she comes home from work or maybe she's a stay at home mom whatever you run her bed you you make a bubble bath for her you put the little candles around the bath mm -hmm. and you let her take a bubble bath and you watch the kids little stuff like that you surprise her with you surprise her with flowers or an edible arrangement you just send it to her randomly just because i was thinking about you stuff like that matters i would do that with my lady when i was in la i did it for her when i when i was in singapore but when i was in la and she was sing in singapore before i moved to singapore i would send her little flowers randomly that she didn't even know about and she mm. would be so happy Okay. That would just, and when you do that, the sex is going to be better. You're going to get it more often. Your lady's not going to uh, nag at you. Like, dude, hmm. court, court your lady. Okay. Uh, I, a little part of nuance here also would be like, how much, are you familiar with the five love languages? I'm, I'm pretty sure you would. Oh, uh, I've heard of it, but I never read the book. Okay. Um, so for the five love languages, it's essentially like, what I try and tie that into is there's like gift giving, words of affirmation, um, quality time, physical touch, and acts of service. And sure. the general recommendation is like one of those are one or two of those are yours. And so you appreciate it a lot when they do one of those five things. So let your woman or wife know that's what I like. But there's also one or two of those that your wife enjoys more than the other three. So you got to figure mm -hmm. out what that is. And mm -hmm. then plan your dates accordingly or plan your gifts accordingly if it's gifts that, like that. You know I, mean? I like, agree. That's, that's essentially the nuance of the book. Um, so for, for you guys who are watching, as you're planning your romance, think about what your woman enjoys the most because what your acts of serve, what your love languages may not be hers. And so reward her in her, when you're going on dates, do her love language because you're supposed to be connecting with her, not with yourself. I agree. Yeah, you got to know your woman, right? Every woman's going to be a little different. Yeah. Right. right. So it's like, I know, I knew my ex liked, um, she liked uh, what's those flowers? Um, those those purple flowers. I, I forget I the name. Flowers, purple, man. Purple, flowers, purple flowers. flowers. They yeah, yeah. Flowers. <laughs> that's why I forgot the name. But <laughs> I, I, I like those. A uh, uh, lavender. She loved lavender, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So when I sent her those flowers, and it was like a lavender soap and the lavender flowers, oh, and and it was like the purple balloon, the purple balloon to match. She loved it, man. She yeah. was like, "Oh my god!" She's like, she texts me, it's like. This was sent from somebody who totally knows me, and they love yeah. it, man. Yeah. And, and and something my grandpa, my grandpa was married for 50-plus years. He died a couple years back. May he rest in peace. Mm -hmm. And one thing he told me is that he's like, Eric, women have a memory of an elephant. They don't forget anything, right? They yeah. they really, they truly don't. Yeah, they, they, and so, <laughs> they own it. <laughs> they own it. Yeah, exactly. So why not use that to our advantage? Most men, we use that to our disadvantage by doing stupid stuff and saying stupid stuff. <laughs> but when you but when you do those little things we're talking about, when you mm -hmm. continue to romance, uh, uh, court your woman on a consistent basis, yeah. now she, she just, she's going to remember that, man. Mm -hmm. She's going to remember that. Yeah. That's solid. That's that's fantastic advice is to use that to your advantage. And make sure you're, when you're doing it, it's, it's obvious stuff that you, you thought about that she likes. And yeah fantastic stuff man yeah definitely okay cool. definitely.
So, and I, I think, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. You, you go ahead and finish your thought. Oh, I was going to say also another track to think, man, look, listen, fellas, stay in shape for your lady, please. Stay in shape. Okay. Please, please stay in physical shape for you, not just for your health, but for your lady. Yeah. I mean, what is it going to be more attractive for your lady? Having sex with a guy who's over, who's overweight or having sex with a guy who, who's in shape? Come yeah. on, fellas. Yeah. We're men. I'll, do you want me to put that as number three? Stay in shape. Number three. Okay. Stay in shape, fellas. I, because, I totally here, believe that. <laughs> yeah, and here's another thing. When you stay in shape, that motivates your lady to stay in shape. Yeah. I can't tell you yeah. how many times. Man, look, women love leaders. Mm -hmm. Women yeah. love leaders. When I went to Singapore, my lady would work out a little bit. But there was a gym in our facility, in our apartment complex. And when I would go to the gym, she would follow me. She mm -hmm. got more consistent with her working out. I got her lifting weight. She got more consistent oh. Good job, man. Her, her diet, when I got around, she did it a little bit when I wasn't around. But when I was living with her, she did it more. Bro, women love leaders, man. Fellas, stay in shape. Stay in shape. Yeah, I I, I agree also. One part of it is um, for, for myself, for my own health. And so I, I believe, like, if you look in the mirror, you should be happy with what you see. Because you're you're the one person living in your, you're in your body. So if you're not happy Absolutely. with what you see, then make it happen. But number two, it, like, I know that... Uh, it's like being um, attracted to someone else's real thing just because we're biologically wired that way. Like that happens. And so I'd want to stay in the best shape possible. So there's like almost no comparison. That would be <laughs> it's, right. like, it's, it's like squash the competition before it happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like, so exactly. It, 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 people like don't want to acknowledge it sometimes, but it's like, dude, that's, it's real. And it helps. I mean, it helps a lot if you're more in shape than, <laughs> definitely no it does man hands down hands down yeah. hands down like hands down man because again it's it's the discipline of doing it yeah that's a big one too it's the discipline of doing it and again there's nothing more attractive to a high quality woman than a guy a man who's disciplined mm -hmm. so that alone keeps your woman attracted um yeah. and yeah the physical body it matters man you, you again does your woman want to have sex with a guy who has a, a beer gut? Or does she want to have a sex with a guy who has a flat stomach? You don't have to have a six pack, but damn, can you at least have a flat stomach? Yeah. Damn. hundred <laughs> percent. Man, that's uh yeah, that's that's I think that's a big point. For sure. I'm trying to compete with like uh my in my head, I want to get to my my body to where it was uh Brad Pitt and Fight Club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, that guy's so shredded. I was like, I'm, I'm gonna, I need to get to that point and stay at that point. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and I yeah. think another thing to keep women attractive, uh, what you talked about in that book, I, I, it's true, man. Don't argue with your lady. Oh yeah. Don't, don't argue with your lady, man. Don't argue with your lady. Uh, any, Have, uh, any, because I, I can imagine some guys who are maybe married or in a long term relationship already, they're in these arguments, like. Any ways, any suggestions for how to evade or to dodge that? Like, sure. Well, it's about just saying, I got, oh, "Oh my God, I'm going to say something that men don't want to." They may. It's like a kryptonite. <laughs> it's just, it's just telling your woman how you, how certain things make you feel when she does certain things. Okay. It's it's it. I see men fall into this trap all the time. They go back and forth with the woman. Mm -hmm. They yell. Mm -hmm. They scream. Right? Oh, let me give you an example. And it's also about sometimes letting your woman just have her moment and sometimes not saying anything. Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. My lady, my ex-fiance, uh, she was, she was, most of the time we're good. We were very compatible. We didn't have very many arguments or disagree. I didn't argue, but very few disagreements. One time we were in the store in Singapore and I had went to the restroom and she was buying shirts or something and she came back. She was like, where were you? And I was like, I just went to the bathroom. Yeah. She's like, you didn't even tell me you, you just walked away and left me. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I, had, I just really had to go. She was like, I hate you. Whoa. And she walked and she walked away. You know what I did? I, I didn't do anything. I was just like, okay. I let her calm down. Mm. I think we went to the restaurant. And when we got back home, she said, I'm sorry. She said, um, I just felt like, I just kind of felt like 
you just left me and I feel like you kind of just abandoned me and I feel foolish because I was talking to the lady at the store and she said, I asked her where you were and she said you left and I thought that why would he leave me without saying anything and mm. I thought you were an addresser and then you can't and then you were actually gone and I feel like an idiot. Mm. So here's the thing, like she rarely did that. I knew at that moment she was just emotional. She didn't really mean it. Mm. Right. I, I know my woman. Yeah. So I was like, OK, I'm not going to sit here. You hate me. What? F you. No, I'm not yeah, going to yeah. do it. I'm going to let her have her moment. Fellas, women are emotional beings. You can't take everything so personal that they do and say, you mm. know, they just have their, their moment. And then I, I said, baby, I understand. No worries. You know, I didn't like that you said you hate me. That made me feel a certain way because I love you so much. But I understand you love me. It's 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 water on the bridge. I love you, baby. It's all good. Mm -hmm. She apologized. I didn't have to ask her to apologize. It was all good. So that's just one example yeah. of, you know, sometimes you don't have to just, just let her have her moment and come back to it later. Now, other times, let's say you guys are having a disagreement. And she's like, well, I I hate when you do this and this and that or whatever you guys get into. it. You're like, you know what? When you say that, that makes me angry. I don't appreciate that because I feel like I'm working hard. I'm doing this and that. I don't appreciate that. Well, you do this and this and this and this and this. Okay, that's fine. I understand how you feel. I can't change how you feel. How you feel is how you feel. And so it is what it is. And I said my piece. And I'm not going to go back and forth with you about this. I love you. And that's it. And, and there's nothing like guys getting, oh, well, she did this. I'm not going to tell her I love her. Like, dude, she's a woman, bro. Calm down. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Unless she's trying to stab you with a knife or something. Calm down, bro. Yeah. Women are emotional. They say what they feel in the moment. Your woman can feel one thing five minutes, and then ten minutes later, she can feel something totally different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. There's a um, actually, there's a guy I was just talking to uh, a few days ago, and he specializes in like conflict resolution. And so, like, he has mm -hmm. some he has uh, some different strategies for for how to get through that. But essentially, like, just let them. There's emotional baggage behind there that's generally like mm -hmm. cooped up. So just let them get that out. And then you validate the emotion, and then that's it. You don't need to go back and forth on on it. Just that's it. They said the exactly, piece. exactly. Because remember what we said: women and what my grandpa said. Women have a memory like an elephant. Mm. So when if you're in an argument with a woman, and you say some nasty stuff to her, it's she's nice. gonna remember that, it's bro. They never it. forget it. They never forget it. Yeah, they never forget it. I'm telling you, I would be with my ex fiance. And we're four years into our relationship, and she brings up something that we that I said or did in year one. Nothing bad, just something like, do you remember when we first met? You said something funny. I said something funny. Yeah. Or I said something, whatever. I, I'm like, I don't even remember that. <laughs> you know, I'm like, uh, I, I said, they don't forget. So the point is, when you're in an argument and you say something nasty, dude, that's in her memory bank. That's in your woman's memory bank. A hundred percent. I had, shoot, I had a, uh, oh, what I wanted to, what I wanted to address as a nuance there also was when you're letting her um, kind of vent to you and speak, uh, you don't take it personally because actually there's a, there's another book I read up called The Four Agreements, I think a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And it was part of that. Oh yeah. And that yeah. was essentially like when people are pissed at you, dude, it's like because everyone sees the world slightly broken. Like no one's world is a perfectly objective view. And so when you get pissed right. or triggered, that's something in your world that you're projecting to someone else's world. So it shouldn't be – don't take any of that person. It's just there's something that dude's tripping about or that chick is tripping about. And you know, there's no reason to take it personal unless that's also broken in your world and then, then you get triggered. Uh, right. But part of what I want to go on as a nuance is like throughout that, your woman's yelling at you uh, like in your scenario – or um, if your woman's upset, et cetera. And if you don't react, then it also makes her feel safer because she's like, I can mm -hmm. bring this to him without worrying about him losing his shit. Yeah. Well, I was like caught between saying stuff and shit. I'm trying not to cuss as much. Because yeah. yeah. Words. <laughs> so, but it's, it's essentially also a signal afterwards that like, oh, even if I am, if I lose my stuff, um, then he's he's cool. Like he's, he's not going to be shaken. Uh, I don't have to worry about him losing uh, his cool either. Yes, indirectly, it's kind of a test. It's yeah. kind of a test. Women are always going to test you. I, 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 told my, I told my friends this all the time uh, who I was trying to help. 
Uh, look, man, it doesn't matter. When do women stop testing me? When you die? When, when is your woman? When 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 you're buried six feet deep, that's when your woman's gonna stop telling you. Again, my grandparents were married for fifty plus years. Uh, there, my grandpa was 85, 86. I would I I I were were around my grandparents all the time. My grandma tested my grandpa all the time, mm. and they were married for fifty plus years. It never stops. Yeah. It's how, like you said, it's how you handle it. Oh, because man. women see that and it's an indirect test women don't do this intentionally yeah yeah they're not right? like i'm gonna but test it's like now. okay like, if he not... can handle me he can <laughs> yeah 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 no, no no not at all um women is like like you said it's true if he can handle me he can handle the world and something that my ex-fiance used to tell me all the time you're my rock she used to say this verbatim yeah i have a i have a photo here that she she did one of these things she did she would create like collages of us together oh, nice. photos and memory. yeah and on on one of these collages, when we went to Las Vegas, it was a picture of us, and she wrote, you are my rock. Mm. And she would tell me, you're my rock. No matter what I'm going through, you never take when I have my little moments. And she barely had those moments. She's like, you never take it personal. You never yell at me. You're my rock. This is one reason I love you so much, because mm. you're just my rock. You're steady Eddie. And, and that's so attractive to a woman. It's mm. so attractive. It doesn't mean you let a woman browbeat you. If your woman is browbeating her, you set that boundary and you let her know, hey, you can't do this. You can't call me names. This stops. Yeah. But that's different than a woman having an emotional moment. It's different, right? So when she has her moments, like you said, if, you, if you're good and you don't overreact, you, man, it just, oh. bro, the yeah. sex, bro, <laughs> the, the attraction. <laughs> It just all goes up. Yeah, yeah. It just all goes up. Mm -hmm. There's a, um, what would you say the difference between, just so guys can understand more so, because we're all like, what exactly does that mean? Um, what's the difference between like brow beating and just having an emotional moment for you? Like how would a guy distinguish the difference between the two? Yeah, brow beating is, is something that your woman does consistently. She t She's negative. She, she cusses you out. She... She she says negative things to you. She tries to make you feel small. She emasculates you. That's a woman that you really don't really need to be with, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, unless that woman changes after you set those boundaries with her, you really don't need to be with a woman like that. That's a low quality woman. Yeah. Uh, we're like in this team. tearing you down. Absolutely, and a lot of a lot of look, man. My brother's with a woman like that, like. And I love my brother, and I've told him this. Like I've been before, I got confidence and stuff. Same with women. I was in relationships with women like that, and and you just never want to be. It's just all bad, man. It's just all bad. It's all bad. You never want to be with a woman like that. You want to be with a woman who's high quality, and and she she's positive. She has a positive outlook on life. She's enthusiastic. That's the type of woman you want to be with. Mm -hmm. um, and in in long term. That's what's going to uh, make you happy. Looks, looks. You get used to looks. A beautiful woman, you get used to. A beautiful woman is nothing, man. Because I don't mean her as a person, but I'm saying her looks are nothing. Because you get used to the looks, and the looks mm. become normal. What What matters long term is her personality and her character. Yeah, that's true. So that's the difference, right? She just having a moment every once in a while. She explodes. I don't care how sophisticated a woman is. My woman was very sophisticated. Mm -hmm. These days, I, I date very sophisticated women. They're going to have their moments due to their emo, their women. Mm -hmm. This is who they are at their core. Since the beginning of caveman times, women have, and before that, when we're in the Africa, of, uh, on the safari in Africa, women have always been emo. This is how they're built, right? So no matter how sophisticated your woman is, she's going to have her moments. You mm. have to accept that. Man, we have this ideal that, oh, everything's going to be perfect. It's never going to be perfect. Your woman's never going to be perfect. Stop putting those standards on her. She's a human being. Yeah. All right? So she's going to have her moments. But it's your job as a man to be the rock and be there for her and let mm. her know, I'm handling it. I'm not going to leave you because you're having a moment, and I'm not going to be overly judgmental, and I'm not going to get all butthurt about it. Because mm -hmm. I'm the man, I'm the rock, I'm the head of the household here. Yeah. Fully agree. Um... What I wanted to, well, something I guess would be, uh, I think maybe useful for some of the listeners is like, if she is um, 
let's say she does browbeat you or she is browbeat mm-hmm. you're like this guy's in a relationship you listen to it now he's like oh crap my girlfriend does that now right mm-hmm. um what would you how would you uh navigate that situation so let's say she you got, you're with a woman for some reason she's browbeating you right now like what how would you evade or navigate or manipulate or not mani- manipulate it's a bad word yeah uh, in, in this situation how would you navigate that situation i think is better sure well but that that one it's really uh it's really untraining that behavior by setting your boundaries as man and if you have a woman who browbeats you, you're going to have to set those boundaries for a little while. It may take you a couple months for her to get out of that habit because humans, look, man, we're a combination of our habits. If you're rich mm-hmm. or poor, you're a combination. That's all because of the habits. Yeah. If you're terrible with relationships, men or women, it's all because of the habits. If you're fat or skinny, it's all because of habits. So we have total control. So human beings, um, if you're with a woman like that, you just have to undo those habits. By t- you're going to have to constantly tell this woman, don't talk to me like that. I don't appreciate that. You may have to ignore her uh, when she talks to you this way. Like it, it's going to take work. Mm-hmm. Um, this is why I always recommend never be with a woman like that. Uh, if you have to, I would always say start a new relationship. But that's 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 harder if you're married. That's harder, and especially if you have kids. So I understand that. So if you're married and you have kids, and you want you're with a woman who browbeats you, you're going to have to undo that behavior by setting boundaries. Okay. So it's through boundaries. I'm asking like my woman yeah. is fantastic. So I don't have that issue, but I can imagine yeah, 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 the yeah. audience got that issue and I'm just trying to <laughs> try to Yeah, yeah, it. no, I got you. No, no, I got you. Definitely no. But yeah. that's what you have to do. Uh I've helped some of my old clients do that. And I'm just like, man, you gotta set those boundaries with her because uh again, women don't respect men that they can walk all over. So if a woman feels like she can browbeat you, that means that your boundary was weak. You had holes in that boundary. Mm-hmm. And you look, we train people how to treat us. So you trained your woman to, it's That's okay to one. treat you that way, right? Yeah. It's okay to treat you that way. If you had a strong boundaries, and I'm speaking from this when I have weak boundaries too, right? If mm-hmm. you have strong boundaries, you're never going to let a woman browbeat you. It's, mm-hmm. it, beginning of a relationship, when you notice it, you, you're going to check that woman just on that. Listen, hey, never talk to me like that. <laughs> I don't know who you think you're talking to, but I, I don't. If you talk to me like that, I don't take that in my life. I yeah. talk. I only deal with people I respect, and if that's not you, then we don't need to be together. This is in the beginning, right? Yeah, yeah. But so, cause so now you you set. Here's what I noticed: you set the tone for the relationship in the beginning. It's usually how it's gonna go. Makes sense for the rest of the relationship. And if if you want something to change again, you gotta re- rewire people's behavior. It's mm-hmm. like children, right? It's like you have kids. It's like. Yeah. They they when they're little and they get to walk they 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 get stuff they chew stuff sh- yeah underwear. right and it's conditioning them <laughs> yeah. exactly <laughs> what they shouldn't be doing so it's like it's conditioning them and the same thing with human beings human psychology is the same so when you're when you're with a woman who browbeats you it's 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 undoing that by as a man by setting those boundaries consistently yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I agree to hold the boundary for sure and then I, I'm. Let me correct me if I'm wrong. Also, but I think mm-hmm. uh, another way to help Im- like influence that is like show appreciation for when they do it well. I agree with that yeah. actually. Yeah, that's um yeah something I had picked up was like show appreciation. Just like especially for like kids was mm-hmm. is like sh- let them like if you only tell your kid when they're doing things wrong, eventually they're just gonna keep doing things wrong because like that's the only time I get sure. time with dad. But if you like let them know like hey, I appreciate you sitting in your chair. Um, that's really awesome. They give them a fist bump and they're like, oh, cool. I'm, dad likes it when I sit in my chair versus like trying to eat on the floor, you know? <laughs> I agree. You know what? You're completely right. And um, I think um, David Data talks about that in The Way to Superior Man. And yeah. um, the guy in the um, in the Hold On To Your Nuts talks about that. Uh, praise. Women, yeah. women, um, women, listen, women love praise. Look at Instagram. I always jokingly tell my friends, if Instagram were to die yesterday, half the female population would just die too because of the, <laughs> the praise and the attention that they get, right? And it's, one, man, women love attention. Women love praise. Hmm. That's just, they're emotional. That's that's how they are. Man, we don't care about that stuff. Women, they love it. You know, yeah. they love it. There's a reason why they do their hair, the makeup, their nails. and bro, They love that stuff. They mm-hmm. love that stuff. So you're, you're correct. If a woman is doing that, she's respecting your boundaries. Tell her, baby, I really, I really appreciate that. I, I, I agree with you because I was dating this girl. I had to let her go though, 
this is recently, and mm. she just um she was a little too needy and clingy for me. And I told her, listen, I'm working. Don't blow me up when I'm working. Don't call me when I'm working. Don't ever text me when I'm working. Yeah. And she would do it and do it and do it. And I would just ignore her. And she'd be like, why are you ignore me? I'd be like, because you didn't, you didn't, you're not respecting my boundary. Yeah, and then when she true. stopped doing it, number one, I became way more attracted to her. I became way more attracted to her. And I said, baby, I really appreciate you not blowing me up. Mm-hmm. I told her, I told her verbatim, I'm so attracted to you when you're like, don't blow me up and you respect my boundary. It's so sexy. Mm-hmm. And she just, she stopped doing it for a while. She went back to it, but she stopped doing it for a while. Um, but yeah, you're right. Praise works with women, definitely. Mm-hmm. I well, it's something I actually learned from like John C. Uh, Maxwell because he's like a leadership teach leadership. Yeah, of course I know John Maxwell. Yeah. I love John Maxwell. You're, Fifteen I invaluable touch- leadership. Yeah. Oh, I love John. Maxwell. <laughs> I was gonna say, I think if if you think if you touch network marketing, that like comes hand in hand with him and Jim Rohn. <laughs> Definitely. It's Zig it's, it's it's Zig Ziglar. Zig Ziglar and, and Brian Tracy. And Brian, Brian Tracy. Tracy. Yeah, all those guys just did a whoop. Here's your reading. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, that was one of the ones uh, I picked up from him, but then I also learned it from uh, teaching martial arts for little kids because little kids it's like my exact example of if you got like 10 four-year-olds and there's one screwing around and you give the, the one who's screwing around all the attention all the four-year-olds go oh he's getting attention i'm gonna screw around too you just lose the whole class right. so what you're supposed to do is like if there's a kid who's a good even if one's screwing around you praise the kid who's good hella good like hella times and everyone wants to act like that kid because they want the attention true positive um, so, reinforcement right yeah positive it's, reinforcement it's just human psychology it man. is this yeah, works- overall Men or women or anything, this is human psychology, right? We all want praise and acknowledgement, mm-hmm. but again, women thrive on that, right? So that's we that's going back to that post, right? It's like when all those women were all butthurt about your post, it's like, dude, calm down. Uh, <laughs> men, we're all we're all emotional beings. Yeah. Women just thrive on their emotion. They're emotional based, but men are emotional too. But, but we're we're logic based, right? Mm-hmm. Our fundamental base is different. But women just thrive on emotions, and that's okay. That's how they are. That's what makes them good mothers. That's, that's true. We, you want a woman who's feminine and emotional, and, and you don't want a woman who's logical. And I tell my friends this, dude, if women were logical like men, men would never get laid because most men are ugly. <laughs> most men are ugly. Dude. Most men are that's ugly. Dude. Most, men, most men are hideous, bro. Yeah. Like so, it's like including myself. Like, dude, if women were logical like us and they only judge off of looks, we would, we would, the human race would be extinct, dude. Come mm. on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, that's a pretty good quote. I gotta tell you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Well, so that would be like point. So point number four, I guess, and to just complete this list, we got point number four is don't argue. Um, we went on a little bit of a tangent. What would you say, like maybe 0. 0.5 or 0. 0.6? Or would you say those are the four? So we did don't argue, court your woman, uh, stay on your mission, stay in shape. Uh-huh. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to tell you one here that most guys won't agree with. Okay. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. I believe in this one a lot. That's what tell I did on my truth. fourth date. I just straight up, I don't have money. I'm sorry. <laughs> Tell the truth. It's attract. No, it's attractive, brother. Okay. You know why that? You know why that works with your wife? Because guys lie to get laid. Mm, yeah. Guys lie to guys, impress the women. I've heard. Yeah. That that makes uh, a lot of sense. And be honest. Like no, and you stand out. I'm telling you, when I go out and I tell women the truth, and I'm direct, dude, they get. Some women are not going to like it because some women like when guys lie to them. But the majority of women, dude, they're going to it's going to be so attractive. They're going to be like, "Wow, this guy, I can trust you now." He's yeah. not they're like, "He's not saying this just so he can have sex with me." Mm-hmm. And women and women appreciate that. The they honesty. really appreciate that. They do. Yeah. They do tell the truth, be honest in your relationships. Mm-hmm. Be direct. As a man, as a man, it's our job to be direct. Women, it's their job to be indirect because that's how they communicate. Mm-hmm. And as a man, it's when your woman's indirect, it's your job to decipher that. You mm-hmm. got to know how to speak woman needs. You got to know when your woman says, we, are, we have to understand when your woman says this, she actually means that. Not all the time, but you have to understand. Like when she's like, you have to understand, let's say your woman's upset and she's like, you didn't take the trash out. Okay. 
Maybe she is upset with you about that trash, but maybe it's something else. Mm, Maybe she's upset with you. Yeah, something underneath, right? And it's your job as a man to decipher that. So Mm. it's a woman's job to be indirect, but it's our job as men to be direct. And when you're direct, it's so attractive to them. Your wife, your girlfriend, whoever. Girls you're just meeting, it's so so attractive. I'm not talking about, now guys, take this out of context. I'm not talking about being crude. Girl, you're so sexy. I just want to F you and take you home. No, come on, man, bro. Come on, bro. Have common sense, bro. (laughs) Let's let, let, let's be socially calibrated. Let's have some social intelligence, bro. Yeah, I'm yeah. talking about just being honest about who you are as a person, what your intentions are. Mm. Hey, I am looking for a girlfriend. No, I'm not looking for a girlfriend. Guys will tell women, oh, yeah, I'm looking for a girlfriend. I'm looking for a wife, and they just want to have sex with her. No, just tell the woman, I'm just looking for – I'm just casually dating right now. I'm not looking for nothing serious. Yeah. Be honest. Hey, you know what? I'm working on my career. I'm not there yet. I'm in, I'm in progress. Yeah. Don't sit here and lie to women in front and don't do that, man. Don't do they Don't do that. Makes sense. Be man. honest. You know, be honest. I think I forgot the, the quote, but it was something like, uh, there's a, something about like how the stupidest thing, this is the stupidest thing about men is that we believe women can't handle the truth. I agree. I was like, that's, that's pretty good. That's a good quote. <laughs> I agree. You know, and that's perpetuated. And the dating community at times was like, no, well, women can't handle the truth, so the, so you have to lie. And I'm yeah. like, I don't agree with that, man. That hasn't been my real world experience. I have, I've approached over 10,000 women. And you direct approach, too. It's not like the, hey, do yes. you know what time it is? Oh, cool. Now that I'm standing here next to you. Can... <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm, 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 I'm direct. I'm, I, I say, you're very distracting. I have to say hello to you. If mm-hmm. I didn't say hi, I'd be kicking myself. I saw you walking across the room. I thought you. I thought you. You have to tone down your cuteness. This is this is what I say mm. to ev- to every woman. Daytime, nighttime, club, bar, Starbucks, McDonald's. I met women in McDonald's, mm. and I'm like, I saw you getting your drink. You're cute. I have to say hello. It works. Women, women, those corny pickup lines, all that indirect stuff. Women don't respect it. They might entertain it, but they don't respect oh, it. Oh, that's and, a good. That's a good you know? distinguishment. Yeah. Women might entertain it, but they don't respect it. Yeah, but they don't respect And women don't have sex with guys that entertain them. They have yeah. sex with guys that they respect. That's that that makes a lot of uh that's really good knowledge right there, actually. <laughs> Cause a lot of yeah, guys are in this like, oh well, I got to talk to her for longer. It's like, yeah, but you know, it's not Yeah, not and, and and women are not stupid. Let me say, let me tell you something. Women are not stupid. Women, women are highly, most women, if not all women, are highly socially intelligent. Oh yeah, Here's, more, more than like I can even understand socially. Oh my god, dude! It's like leagues, As leagues by on beyond men. Dude, they know they're especially if she's attractive, mm-hmm. dude. Here's why guys don't understand this: if a girl's attractive, she starts getting hit on. Let's say by the time she's fourteen or fifteen. Mm. From 15 to let's say 20, from 21, let's say just just 21. Let's not even go 25. From 15 to 21, she's been hit on at least bare minimum. I'm not exaggerating. A thousand times, Mm -hmm. whether directly or indirectly. Yeah. She's socialized. So if if you do, if you experience something a thousand times in a short period, you're going to see patterns. Mm -hmm. An attractive woman is forced to interact with men. She has no choice. Mm. Men, even if we're attractive, we're not forced to interact with women. A man, even if he's good looking, he'll go to the bar, sit there, and no women will talk to him. As a man, we have to be proactive. So we have to learn these skills. So when you go indirect, it's like in her mind, she's thinking, okay, guy, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's it's, like, uh... This is obviously not to the scale women have to entertain this at, but it's it's like now that I'm in the coaching space and I'm, I'm building brand online, people shoot me DMs and I can tell. It's like, I know you're not just, hey, what's up? Like, let's be friends. Like, what? just tell me your pitch. Just just tell me your pitch. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I respect it more. No, I, I, I totally yeah. agree with you, bro, because it's like uh, I was trying to do some marketing for my business mm-hmm. and I, I was I was some um, Google ads for my business, right? Yeah. And this one company is like, I'm like, hey, are you guys in Houston? Because that's my market. Mm. They're like, give us a call. We'll, we'll, we'll talk you through it. I'm like, can you, we'll, 
the cost. We'll talk you through it. Just give us a call. Like, All right, here we go. This other company, I'm like, hey, um, I'm in the Houston market. They're like, it's going to cost this much. I was instantly attracted to that company yeah. because I know they're not going to BS me. They gave yeah. me the price up front, and it was something that I could afford. So it's just like, dude, just, just, just be direct. You know, don't be overtly direct and yeah. sexual. Let's not be idiots, but be, be, let's be direct. Let's be uh, uh, classy, but let's just be direct. The only time I go indirect is if, if, uh, if I'm in a bar and there's what we call a mix set and there's guys and girls and I, I can uh, yeah, tell yeah. If guys and girls are, are like together or not, or they're just friends. Yeah, I can't. Yes, yeah, so sometimes you can't tell. I'll go indirect then because I don't want to step on any toes. Yeah, you don't I don't want to be disrespectful to the dudes. Yeah, yeah. this is yeah. I'm trying to I'm not trying to fight over any women. I don't know these women. So I'll say, hey, hey guys, is this the best is this the best bar in, in, in Houston? Is this the best where Ryan? Is this the hmm. best bar in, in LA? Then I'll go indirect. Then I I I went over the group and I'll say, Hey, so how does everybody know each other? Yeah. And if they're like, oh, we're married, we're couples. Oh, okay. How long you guys been together? Oh, two. Years. Okay, that's awesome. My grandparents were together for fifty years. That's beautiful. I love seeing relationships. Have a nice night. Yeah. Then I do that. If they're to not together, I'd be like, oh, okay, cool. I, ha I have a confession. You guys seem cool, but I like your friend right here. Is it okay if I talk to her? So, but then I immediately go direct. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so the, in, going indirect is it has its place, but most of the time, dude, just state your intention. Mm -hmm. Be honest. And I wanted to mention something actually that uh, I just it kind of like dawned on me as you're talking about like the overtly overtly uh, direct approach. Overly direct, yeah, yeah. If if you approach and you're you're the whole thing, I guess would be direct because you want um, like intimacy or to screw the girl or whatever. Then right. I guess in a way it also communicates subconsciously that like sex is more important than your mission. Yeah, because instead of her coming along with you as you're going on your mission, it's like oh, I just want to bang. And then it's like, there's nothing exactly. beyond that. Yeah, exactly. And listen, women don't look, let me tell you something, man. A woman's not going to respond to that because oh, yeah. women don't respond to that because look, society judges women for being sluts. So what, even, even if a woman is promiscuous, if you come at her like that, because she doesn't want to be judged by her friends or society, She's not, women don't respond to that. Trust me, I know. It's not that I've done it. I just know I've heard dumb guys say this stuff when I was yeah. in a club. You yeah. hear dumb, crazy stuff. Women don't respond to it. Even, even, even if they're like that, they don't, especially if they're in front of their friends. Mm. A woman's friends, especially when she's in her 20s, means more to her than anything. Mm. A woman's opinions of her friends, her, her social circle, a woman's social circle means everything to her. So she's definitely not going to make herself look like a slut in front of some random guy at the bar yeah it doesn't it doesn't work but i've approached women in front of their friends just by saying you're distracting you're cute i have to say hello and the friends would be like oh my god i like him talk to him they encourage mm. because it's like it's all about how you make them feel guys yeah. forget this it's all about how you make a woman feel if you make her feel you give her the wrong emotions it's over for you you're toast mm. it's done yeah a hundred percent uh, okay, I think one of the questions that people in the audience are probably asking is like, uh, so right now I'm a guy who coaches married men on how to sure. have better connection with their wife and kids. And uh, it sounds like you had an ex fiance, but you're currently single. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Yes. Like why? Why the choice of being instead of following through with your ex fiance? Why the choice to be single? Sure. Uh, you know, to be honest with you, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to get married. I thought I was. Funny enough, right? It's like, mm -hmm. oh, after five years, you think you would know you were ready but i wasn't ready mm -hmm. um my ex-fiance she felt it and she confronted me about it she's like listen i feel like you're getting cold feet we were supposed to get married like in a month and i was like yeah you're right you're right i do have cold feet so we decided to end it um and she was right but the and so that was my thing i thought i was ready but i was not mm -hmm. um i was not ready and I, I, I don't I don't think it was fair to her if I had gotten married and I wasn't ready because yeah, I'm yeah. not a cheater. Because you also would have yeah, you also would have wanted out the whole time, which is not a good Yeah, I wouldn't want it. And it was nothing it was nothing to do with what she did. She was amazing, man. She mm -hmm. is amazing. We're still friends. I was talking to her yesterday. Mm -hmm. And that's how I know our relationship was legitimate because in the past most of the women that I broke up with, I was I did not stay friends with, and her, her and I are, are still very close. We're still very. She just texted me this morning, 
So we're still very close. I just wasn't ready and I wasn't fair to her and I'm not, and I'm not a cheater. Yeah. So, so I wanted to just uh, get the dating and stuff out of my system and then I'll be ready um, when I'm ready, you know? Mm. Yeah. Okay. I, I think that's important. I think a lot of guys, because they come from scarcity with women, Mm, they settle. That's true. They they settle and they rush into in, into in, into things. I've I've done it in the past. Mm. You rush into it and uh, you rush into a relationship with a woman that's not really the woman that you like, but you she's the only woman. You don't want to be lonely. Yeah. And 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 that's that's not good because when you don't want to be lonely, then you don't screen. You gotta screen these women, and that's another oh, yeah. thing men don't. Do. Yeah. They don't screen filter. women. They don't feel to women at all. Yeah. They're just happy to get a woman. I used to be like this, so I'm not judging mm. uh, whoever. Listen, I'm not judging you, fellas. I was there, so I know. And um, so you just get into something, and then you get what you settle for in this life, mm -hmm. right? You get mm -hmm. what you settle for in this life. So, so that network you know, marketing coming through right there. <laughs> hey, it's, <laughs> it's true. true. It's, it's true. true, right? I just because network true. marketing doesn't mean it's not true. I'm just saying that's. <laughs> yeah, no, no, definitely. I, I see. I totally agree with you. So. It's like, uh, uh, don't if you truly know you're not ready, don't get in a relationship with a woman just because you don't want to get lonely. That's that's the, the um, I would say don't even have sex with a woman because you're lonely. Yeah. If you haven't had sex in a while, don't. If you know you're not, trust me, man, if you know you're not attracted, a lot of guys do this. They're not attracted to this woman, but they're just using her for sex. Don't do it, bro. It's, it's a bad path. Yeah. Not a good game. No, it's not. It's, it's, it's not, and, and it ruins your self esteem and it ruins your confidence. And it's a cycle that, tell you, man, I, I know so many guys that do this and they're so unhappy because the sex is just about the sex. I got to have the sex. And here's the thing, dude when you come across that high quality woman that you want to be in a relationship, that desperation that you've been having with all those, she yes, feels that. that. Yeah. Women know desperate and needy men from a mile away. The higher quality she is, the more she's gonna screen you out if you're desperate and needy. Mm -hmm. I used to tell my coaches, my students this all the time. Women will forgive you for anything except two things. Okay. Being yeah. being uh needy, clingy, and desperate, and being boring. You cannot yeah. be either one of those. You cannot be either one of those. Oh, that's really good. Can you say that one more time? Needy. Women will forgive you for anything except being two things. Mm -hmm. Needy and clingy, needy slash clingy. And boring. And slash boring. Yeah. And and that's for that's for dating and for marriage. Yeah. I'll I'll say also um for marriage too, like one of the things I, I try and advise my guys is like it's good you go on dates, but you need to vary up where you put the dates. Like it should be somewhere new or do something new or learn something new. So that way you're creating mm -hmm. new experiences as as mm -hmm. it's going through. Yeah. Ex ab absolutely, absolutely. Again, it goes back to being slightly unpredictable. Yeah. It's 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 always always courting your woman. But how long I gotta court my woman till the day you die? Mm -hmm. <laughs> as long as she's a woman and she's emotional, you are gonna have to continue to court her. Sorry, yeah. sorry, brother. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and I think in a way it, it's almost like uh, it's almost like I I almost look at it as like it's God's way of making your life more interesting. Because if it was just a guy and you're like honed on her goals, that's all we're doing. So if I'm on a road and there's a freeway and we're going on the freeway, that's it. But like if it was good women in your life, it's like, hey, why don't we like take some scenic route for a little bit instead of just driving straight for 10 fucking days. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Cause sometimes guys yeah. will just be in that grind mode and it's just like, this is it, this is it. Like, yeah. So yeah. it's a way to, uh, it's, it's, I don't know, it's beneficial for both. Like you were steady for your woman, you're, you're her rock and then she adds, Variety and keeps things interesting. Absolutely, absolutely, it's a, it's a absolutely. good symbiotic relationship. I think this, this sets up. Absolutely, man, one thousand percent, and and it makes you guys both happy. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, relationships are relating. Oh yeah, yeah. It's 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 relating to this person, and that doesn't mean we, men have this thing. It's my way or the highway. No, brother, you're in a relationship with someone. They, it has to be a good experience for them too, okay. right? It has yeah. to be a good experience for mm -hmm. both sides. Wow. It has to be a good experience for you, but it has to be a good experience for your woman, man. Mm -hmm. it, it just has to. <laughs> yeah. It just has to. Like You can never get complacent. You can never get complacent with your woman. You can never get complacent because 
especially if your woman's really attractive, she has a lot of options, dude. People are people are waiting for weakness. Bro, <laughs> bro. People are waiting for weakness. Bro, let me tell you something. My last relationship, I was in a relationship, beautiful woman from mm -hmm. Mexico, from Guadalajara. I love Latin. And I, I broke I broke it off with her. She wanted to she wanted to get engaged, and I just I told her like I'm not ready for that. Yeah. I just got out of a five year relationship. I'm not ready for that. Mm. And uh, let me tell you, a week later, she was with somebody else. Like like dude, like women like so if 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 you're not on it, bro, it's it's not to stay paranoid. If your woman loves you, she's just not gonna dip and leave you. That's not how this works. Yeah. But you have to understand if your woman is attractive. Like, dude, when you guys, when when she, if she decides to leave you, it's not gonna be long before she has another suitor. Mm -hmm. So, so and that's gonna bring her those emotions. So, just be that suitor that she would have left you for. Yeah. If you guys break up, just be that, just be that guy. Yeah, a hundred percent. I I heard. Um, so there's a good. There's this. I don't know if it was in. Uh, uh, hold on to your nuts or another book, mm -hmm. but it was essentially like. Uh, imagine I haven't run this through like with my guy because I just learned about this, but it was essentially like if imagine if your woman was gonna have an affair. Let, let's say you had mm -hmm. had an affair. What does that dude look like? Because that's the direct threat to your relationship right now, and you should become that dude. Like if he's super wealthy and stocky and ripped mm -hmm. and has charisma, like you can learn how to do all that stuff. So it's almost like a safeguard against her, someone who you think might be able to pull. Right, right, right. right. I don't, yeah, know, I don't know if that was in the book, but I was like, oh, that's an interesting way to think about it. Like, what's the biggest weakness in this scenario? Yeah, and, and, and uh, hold on to your nuts. He talks about that. He says, be the man that your, your woman would have an affair with. Oh, um, yeah, so it is in here. Okay. I, I read this over yeah. like a week, plus I've been learning things from like four different sources, so I forgot. Fair enough. <laughs> it's all a big snowball yeah, in my head information. Yeah, and it's true, man, and it doesn't mean Like it, it, it's just all that means is giving her those emotions, mm -hmm. giving her those emotions. It's not looks, it's not status. It's giving her those emotions because when a woman uh, dates somebody new, it's the emotion, it's the newness of it. But you can uh, give that, you can give, you can give that to your woman in your relationship, no matter how long. Think about this. Think about this, bro. I stayed with a woman for five years who lived ten thousand miles away from me, mm -hmm. who never cheated on me. And who had options and who is beautiful. I mean, when we walk, literally, when she would come to L.A., even when we were in Singapore, women would stop her and tell her how beautiful she is. We would go into Sephora yeah. and the workers would tell her how beautiful she is. So I know my woman's good looking. I'm at a skill set where I only date beautiful women, right? Yeah. I have the skill set for it. That's not bragging. That's just a fact because I put in the work. Mm -hmm. so, so when a woman's beautiful like that, and she has options, you, you can keep them. How did I keep her for five years? Giving those their emotions, laughing, being playful, having a good time, courting her, uh, being the rock. Doing all, when you do all these things, you keep that those emotions going for your woman. Okay. This is all about emotion. This game is an emotional game. This is what guys don't get. I was telling my friend this the other day. He's like, but she did this. I don't understand. I'm like, dude, this is the problem. You're overthinking. This game is a logical game. Whether you're dating or you're in a marriage, this is an emo I mean, emotional game, not a logical game. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Women are emotional beings. So as a man, you got to understand, I got to keep, I got to make her, continue to make her feel good. Mm -hmm. to this. And it doesn't mean you're a kiss ass, guys. Get that confused. And also that's true. Yeah. Oh, well, I got to make her feel good. So I'm going to do everything she says. Not, no. Not a happy wife, happy life. <laughs> no, it, no, that's the biggest lie, man. Been so happy with. That, I'm telling you, I think that has destroyed more marriages than anything happened. Because understand it definitely this. ruined like my last. It was it, it ruined one of my relationships, and it was on the way to ruin this one. I was like, oh, no, this is obviously it, not working. <laughs> it doesn't work, brother. And you know why? We know it doesn't work because in America, women ninety percent. I think it's eighty to ninety percent of women initiate the divorce. I heard it was eighty percent. Yeah. Yeah, men do not leave women. Women leave men. Hmm. think about that think about that if 80 to 90 percent of women initiate the divorce brother it's something the men are doing and men don't want to hear this but as men we have to take accountability we're responsible for our relationships now listen yep. if a woman's crazy that's different if you weren't married <laughs> to one woman and she's that 1%, crazy that one percent over there most yeah. of everyone else is in the 99 exactly so that's different but as a man is total if your woman is normal and high quality when i say high quality i mean like 
she's emotionally stable. She's mm-hmm. a good person. That's what I mean by high quality. She's not promiscuous. She's not a liar. She's not a manipulator. These oh. women, I'm not talking about. I'm Maybe not talking about this. Down, just so guys yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, right now, you know, I'm not talking about strippers, only fan girls. These are low quality women. No matter how, see, a woman could be beautiful, but be low quality. We're mm-hmm. not talking about these women. These women are nuts. We would never marry those type of women. <laughs> I'm talking about the normal women who have normal jobs, uh, Went to college, yeah. having bitch, normal. These women who are normal and um, emotionally normal, right? Mm. If 80 to 90% of them are initiating divorce, dude, it's the man's fault. And men don't want to hear this because a lot of men, oh, well, they want to blame the woman. No, bro. I tell guys this all the time. If your woman is crazy, that's your fault. Why? Because you didn't screen her. You didn't choose the right woman. Yeah. Take responsibility as a man. I chose the wrong woman. I didn't scream. I didn't scream. I want to get in. I tell my clients, dude, don't even consider a relationship, especially when they are new and they start getting successful women. They want to settle down with the first girl that likes them because they haven't had sex or been in a relationship. Yeah. Right. Right. I say, dude, don't even, don't even, exactly. It makes you do dumb stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like being broke, makes you make horrible decisions. Um, I tell guys, don't even consider a relationship until you know this woman for three to six months. Mm Don't even consider a relationship with a woman until you know her for three to six months. Mm. Make that a rule in your mind because now you're going to naturally screen her out. You're going to know her tendencies. You're going to know. And here's the thing. You get to figure out how she is when y'all get in an argument. Is she nasty? Yeah. Does she throw stuff? Does she curse at me? And does she do this? Yeah. Yeah. Crazy stuff. (laughs) Does she, does she do this consistently, right? Because mm. it's easy to be in the beginning. It's look, man. Uh, when things are going smooth, that teaches that tells you nothing about a person's character, man oh, or yeah. woman. Yeah. When yeah. Things are going so. wrong. I'm gonna learn everything about you as a person. Mm. So you're gonna learn everything about your woman when things are not right. When you're broke. When y'all have a disagreement. Let me. One thing I loved about my ex, and I still love about her to this day. Even when we had our little disagreements here and there, dude, she was still very loving. And even if that in that moment she was upset, she would apologize, and she's still very loving for the rest of the day. She never the entire day hated me for the entire day. She mm-hmm. never did that. Yeah, yeah. So how is your woman when things aren't going right? That matters. Mm-hmm. That's that's uh, I'm, I, I, when you see me write down, sometimes it's no, sometimes I'm writing timestamps. So when I'm editing this, I can just clip this soundbite. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 it's all good. Well, it's 17. I think that's that's super important. There's a, I was, I was just telling this other guy about it. Um, I forgot who it was, but there's this good, uh, this great scene where it was like, kind of like when you're, I, I kind of viewed it as like this was a great portrayal of a strong woman, and it was Winston Churchill, and he's like giving this speech against like uh, the like the Nazis and why German German or why Britain won't bow to Germany, and the mm. whole country hates Churchill. And they're just like, no, dude, like he's so many people are gonna die, he's gonna bomb us, blah blah. blah. And he's like, you don't understand, we can't bow to tyranny, and uh, everyone like obviously the wife is seeing all this, and so she, there's a scene where she's like crying, right. And then um, he walks through the door and she like wipes her tears and she's just like, how was your day? And she just like held it for him because, you know, yeah, because he like that's essentially as a guy, when you're going through hell, you'd want your woman strong where she's emotionally stable and can can support you. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. That, you know what that reminded me of uh, when the late great Kobe Bryant died mm. and uh, me being from Los Angeles. I oh, was, that must I, have. I, Oh, dude, I was jacked up. I was jacked up. I, when Kobe retired, you were, uh, and when he had that 61 points at the Staples Center, I, I was living down the street from this. I cried, bro. When he retired, I cried. So you can imagine I cried when I heard the dude die. Dude, I was yeah. full up. I was, it was like a family member of uh, mine had died because mm-hmm. I was a kid. I played basketball. I had friends in the NBA. Okay. So I, 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 you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so my point was, um, they they were bringing up all this video of Kobe, and uh, he was talking about Vanessa, you know, his wife. And he was saying, they were asking him, this was an old interview, like 96, 97, 98. Mm. Um, and he was like, man, he, they're like, what drew you to Vanessa? And he was like, and you can uh, pull up this uh, clip. 
Mm. He's like, uh, not right now, but at a later point, he's like, yeah. man, she's strong. She's strong, man. That's why I love Vanessa. She's strong. And when Kobe died, I was like, how is Vanessa dealing with all that? I would always think about her. Yeah. And I would be more sad for his wife than anything else. And, dude, she she showed strength that I'm just like, how? I would be devastated. I wouldn't be yeah. able to talk. My mm-hmm. child died. My husband died. Like, bro, like, what? And, dude, she handled that with such elegance and strength. Obviously, she was tore up. Oh, yeah. But, dude, her public face was strong. And then I saw that video, and I was like, I see why Kobe chose her. Yeah. He was right. He was right. And, and that goes to your point. Yeah, man, you got to have a woman that's strong. And, and my ex was like that, dude. She was like, I believe in you. She's like, I, when I was building my business, I didn't have, I was broke. I didn't have anything. She's like, I believe in you. She's like, I don't get it. Too Sometimes she would get frustrated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes she would get frustrated, but she was like, I believe in you. I, I believe in you. You know, and you want, you need a woman like that. You need a woman who's supportive of you like that. Yeah. Oh, 100% agreed. Yeah, man. Uh, one of the things I wanted to ask, because I, I think there may be some guys in the audience who are wondering this, is like, any tips to speak womanese? <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine some guys are like, oh, how do you do that? Because we're supposed to be talking womanese to our women. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Any, yeah, any woman tips needs, Yeah, I mean, dude, I mean, ooh, that's a long subject. But I give you the short. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I mean, to, to really learn how to speak womanese, you really, you really have to interact with a lot of women. But in general, womanese is just um, uh, being – at the simplest form, it's more nuanced than this, but at the simplest form, it's being emotional and not lo- overly logical. Being That's what women need. Yeah, it, communicating emotionally and not um, logical. overly logically. So, like, for example, it's like being playful. Like, like I used to tell my students, like, okay, so a woman will, my friend, my, my uh, student will be talking to a woman and a woman might say something like, um, oh, uh, you sound like you're a player, mm. right? You're you sound like you're a player. Uh-huh. And then I, I would tell I would tell my students, okay, like this is how you respond. Like you say something like, you know what? I think my six girlfriends would totally disagree with that. <laughs> That's funny, the, right? Right? It's yeah. funny. See how you laugh? It's emotional. It, it yeah, emotes yeah. emotion. It's playful. Now this is what the logical okay. man would do. And he would fail this. No, no, no. I'm not a player. I really like you. No, 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 no. I, uh, no, yeah, no, yeah. no. I thought you were beautiful. No, I'm, I'm not like that. Mm. Over explaining, over, over logical. No, mm. bro. No. Have fun with this. Okay. You say that playful thing. She's laughing. It's a test. Now you, you and your, you and your lady are. That works with your lady. You can say something playful. Make her laugh, mm-hmm. and then you can be direct. That's this is all women needs is. It's just not okay. You got to understand like, a woman. Yes, and what a woman also what women needs. What a woman says is not what she means. means. As men, that's not how we communicate. That's not as how a we man, we're like, no. As a man, me and you, you're like Chris. You're like E. You're like Eric. Uh, let's do a Zoom thing. Okay, cool. What time? One o'clock. Okay, cool. Uh, that's it. It's all. All right, I'll be there at one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? That's me. That's it. That's, that's it. me. That's it. That's, that's our whole man. conversation. <laughs> that's, that's it. This is women. Uh, okay. Uh, let's meet for lunch at twelve. Okay. What should I wear? Oh, girl, wear that makeup. It makes you look great. Oh, yeah. What about my nails? Yeah, wear that hair color to nails. Oh, you know what? Um, I like I like that I like the scenery in the restaurant because it makes me I like the flowers it makes me feel so good and so happy. This is how women communicate. It's even when they go to a restaurant with their girlfriends. It's how the restaurant makes them feel. It's how the the if you ever been if you ever been with a woman, you understand decor. They are into this stuff. Yeah, the ambiance. It's all feelings, man. We don't. Hey, meet us at the bar. We're gonna watch the game. Do they have the beer that I like and the hot wings? Bye. Like that's, that's all it. we care. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you at the bar. That's it. <laughs> see you at the bar. That's that's man. That's man needs. Woman needs is is again. It's emotional communication. Mm. That's all. And and don't get it twisted, fellas. That doesn't mean you become emotional like a woman because your woman is not gonna be attracted to that. Yeah. It's being able to toe dip your water in, in emotional communication, not going full dive in the emotional communication. Mm. Because if you go full dive in emotional communication, uh, 
that your woman might as well just be a lesbian. That's not what she's there for. <laughs> right? Makes sense. Right? Yeah, yeah, 100 percent Right, right. So, so so she she she's there for the masculinity because mm -hmm. that's what polarity is what attracts. Yeah. Feminine women are attracted to masculine men. That's just how it works. Yeah. Even in, in even in uh uh same sex relationships, there's always a feminine and a masculine, even if there's two two yeah. women or two guys. That's just how it works. But your woman, if she's heterosexual, she wants that masculine energy, but she wants you to be able to dip your toe in her wow. emotional communication. You have to be able to get it, fellas. Most guys don't get it. Mm -hmm. And and that's the problem. Yeah. Agreed. As you're um as you're saying that actually kind of a I don't know how this came up. This is just maybe from talking to you and mm -hmm. uh energy or universe or whatnot. I was thinking about like uh, a woman like testing you. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And so if she's testing you, it's almost like she's checking the house if it's house is safe. But if you fail the tests, then the house falls apart and she got no house. So she's gonna go find a house. Like that's <laughs> I think Absolutely, that's, uh, brother. That's essentially it. Absolutely, one thousand, one thousand percent. And the attraction goes down. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're in a long-term relationship, when you fail a test, that doesn't mean your woman's gonna leave you tomorrow. <laughs> but yeah. if you continue to fail tests over time, yeah, it's like this wall's broken, that wall's broken, that wall's broken. There's a fucking hole over there. It's like this house sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. So it's it's just a slower demise. Mm -hmm. when you're when you're in a relationship right yeah. it just this and, and the number one sign in a long-term relationship of when your woman starts to lose attraction for you is the sex is drying up mm. sex is drying up um with my with my ex for five years that's when i knew the relationship was to an end because she's a highly sexual person and i'm a highly sexual person and towards the in our relationship, the, the the sex started to dry up, and I'm like, oh shit, because mm. I know because I know her. We mm. do two three times a day, and mm. it was like we would have a day or two where we. I'm like, okay, now the breakup sex was great. The breakup sex was fantastic, <laughs> but <laughs> that was crazy. It was a, it was a lot of pent up energy on that. Yeah, yeah. But so that's one thing when you know your your your, your things are drying up when your woman is stingy with the sex. Uh, she doesn't want to have as much sex. That that that's not the end all be all, but that's one of the it's, one it's of the sign. signs. It's a sign. Yeah, like okay, like I'm failing these tests because consistently, it's not about failing a test here and there when you're in a long term relationship. That's gonna happen. Mm. You're gonna slip up from here and there because you're with this person. Yeah, they but say if it's <laughs> yeah, if it's consistently, dude. I mean, look, man, it dries up. Women just are not turned on by guys who are not a rock. They're not, mm. dude. They're they're just not. Mm -hmm. And it's just this. It's un, it may seem unfair to a lot of guys, and it's a lot of responsibility. It's a lot of responsibility being a man. Oh, it, yeah. it, it comes. It comes with a lot of, especially if you have children, because you got to keep your woman happy. Then you gotta, you gotta, you gotta oh, raise your children the right way. It's a lot, and then you gotta provide for all of them. It's a yeah. lot. Yeah. But, dude, so what? You're a man. If you don't like it, be alone. <laughs> that, higher yeah, that, higher that, that exactly. Dude, yeah. be alone. Hire prostitutes. There's a yes. lot of them. Mm -hmm. Like, if you don't like the response, you want to stay a little boy? Okay, that's great. But if you want to be a man with a family, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Step you, up. You, you have to, bro. Yeah. You have to. You, Step you're, up I don't care. I don't care what this feminist society preaches, bro. You're when, when women women only respect men who are head of household, who are masculine. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't care what you say. Yeah, if I'm talking about these high, the high quality women that the, the that most men want, the the women that are high quality, dude. These women do not stay with or stick with or respect guys who are just not masculine, who are not head of the household. They don't. And I'm not even just talking about financially. I mean emotionally, emotionally mentally. Rock. Yeah, yeah. Are they yeah. strong? Up yes, that's more important than the money. Yeah. That's more important than the money. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. that's more important than the money. Yeah, and um, just like for audience, because I know. Uh, for younger guys, it's like, okay, this is the stuff I got to keep up. But I would right. say for like married guys, you were some, probably some strong motherfucker who was on, on a mission when you guys got married. And then over time, right. it's like, oh, I can relax a little bit. And you start getting complacent. Like this is right. essentially where I was like two or three years ago. And I was like, I need to sure. step my shit up because this mm -hmm. isn't going well. And mm -hmm. part of it was like, oh, everything let's, let's, you know, those fucking Facebook quotes where it's like, 
oh, everything happens in God's time if you just like wait. It's like I was waiting for 18 fucking months and nothing happened. So, <laughs> so let's fucking step up. If I want shit to happen, this is exactly how it happened in athletes. Like in, as a world an athlete, you don't magically become world champions. Like you fucking grind every day to become good. And so right. that's, that, that's where I was essentially. It's like, okay, well, this, this advice to um, just essentially be a feminine man and moat whatever that that's not that's not it like this isn't this isn't going yeah. well for either me or and it's and my wife never asked for it because she like she she never wanted that she i just started doing it as a default because i thought that's what was supposed to happen right and she, yeah it, it made the marriage not so good and then when i started stepping up and i was like okay we need to make shit happen now like that's mm -hmm. when i was like okay everything's everything's better as far as i'm concerned mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah you are, you're right brother and look it's the opposite uh strategy for men and women as mm. men we have to be proactive okay mm. i don't care like guys, guys are like oh i don't want a code approach tough luck for you brother you, you can die yeah. alone you can be alone hire a prostitute that's the <laughs> bro that's it yeah because and you're never going to get the high quality woman that you want uh mm. you can go on tinder and bumble the high quality women ain't are not let me use my best uh, english high quality women ain't on tinder and bumble brother you mm. get some you get some you get some okay but especially now uh, i'd say more so than like even before now it's like yeah now it's nuts i think yeah you you, you get some especially now you, especially you get some, you get some women here and there here and there to, but you you're not gonna get the woman that you truly trust me man i have a friend of mine who who complains about the quality of women that he gets on tinder and bubble and i tell him dude go out and approach uh -huh. when and then when he went out and approach like that week he met a handful of women that he really truly liked and was attracted to uh -huh. and i say that to say as men my point was our strategy is different. See, what you're, I'm relating this to what you said about, you know, oh, God will take everything. No. As a man, we have to be proactive. Women can be, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Women can be laid back. That's not the word I'm looking for. But women can be passive. Uh, yeah. Because, yeah. because if you're an attractive woman, the men are coming to you. Mm -hmm. The men are going to take care of you. It's just in a relationship. I'm not talking about successes and, and career. You got yeah, everybody that's, that's when it comes to that, right? I'm talking about in the context of a relationship. Women can be passive. They're the pursued. Mm -hmm. This is just a fact. Yeah. Right. Women run the sexual dating market. This is a fact. Okay. Mm -hmm. And men are in charge of relationships. Women have access to sex. Men, yeah, men, we have access to relationship yeah. because when we woman doesn't get on one. Yeah, yes. Got, exactly. We yeah. ask. We ask her because yeah. any man that has any experience with women, we when you don't want to commit, they all say the same thing. What what are we? I've had that so many times. Mm -hmm. So she can like you, but she can't determine if y'all are getting married or anything, right? Yeah. But women determine who they have sex with, right? So they're the pursuit. So a woman can lay back, rich man, handsome man, good looking man, come their way. They just need to make a profile for real. Like that's it. <laughs> that's it, bro. Make a selfie. Put up an it. eye. Yeah, put up an IG, put up a Tinder, put up a Bumble. They'll have options galore. Yeah. Okay. But for men, it's not like that. We have to be proactive in our life. Mm -hmm. When it comes to women, when it comes to career, when it comes to all that, we have to be super proactive because this is the truth. Life is hard for everybody, yeah. but man, the world is hard on men. There's no. I, there's this joke I love by Chris Rock, who's my favorite stand-up comedian. Yeah. He says. Uh, uh, Nobody cares about men. He said, when you see a homeless man with a dog, we want, we want to get some food for the dog. <laughs> right? It's like, we want to get some food for the dog. What about the man? Fuck him. Like, dude, like this, this is a fact, bro. This is a fact. If you're a man, especially if you're a minority man, like, bro, nobody cares. You have to be proactive in your life. You mm. have to be proactive in your life. Yeah. It's not, it's not, this passive stuff doesn't work, bro. And women don't respect it because like you said, it's being a feminine man. Mm. No man that I know that is masculine is passive. Doesn't happen, bro. Yeah. Doesn't exactly. happen. Every man I know that's successful in business and with women, proactive about their life. What's kind of nuts is um, what kind of comes to mind too is there's a this Bible parable about like the mm -hmm. guy, the man with the talents. You know mm -hmm. about that one? Like one of them gets mm -hmm. five, the other gets three, the other gets one, and mm -hmm. the two who actually like did something even though they didn't get that much. God was like, "All right, hey, cool, you guys are cool." And the one with one, he got pissed. <laughs> mm -hmm. and so i i think about that uh i wouldn't say a lot but i thought i definitely thought about that was like you just need to make the most of what you got 
Like that's Start mm-hmm. where you stand, brother. Mm-hmm. You start, start where you stand. Exactly. Start where you stand. Fortune favors the bold. Look, man, I, I come from poverty, bro. Mm-hmm. I'm from the ghetto, South Central LA. I'm from Inglewood. Dang. When I was 15, I got shot five times. Holy shit. Uh, Wait, hold uh, on. Wait, what? For... Yeah, bro. We should have went into no this t- before we started the whole podcast. <laughs> I should have asked about your, your past. I'm sorry, dude. Yeah, tell me. No, okay. it's all good. Okay. Well, let's let's continue down here. I want to hear this. This is. Yeah, uh, I come from poverty, brother. Uh, had no father. Typical black, uh, young black man story. No father uh, from the ghetto, dysfunctional family, all that, right? Uh-huh. Uh huh. Last month I made twenty thousand dollars, bro. Jesus Christ, good job, man. Uh, uh, no, no, never went to, never went to college. Mm. Uh, C, C student. Um, next year I'm aiming to make between fifty to one hundred thousand dollars. That's that's the goal. Mm. Uh, how did I do this? Being proactive. Um, was it always like this? No. Is there a time when I play victims? Yes, of course. Mm. That's the environment mm. I came from. But I realized it doesn't work. And as men, nobody cares. No nobody cares. Nobody cares. Bro, nobody cares. Yeah. You know, nobody cares. So as a man, you have to be proactive. You know, the homeless shelter. Even at the homeless shelter, they're like women and children first. Yeah. The man lasts. Nobody cares, bro. When in society, when you're a man, you're you're a, a grown man, you're expected to figure it out. You're mm. expected to work. You're mm. expected to make you're expected. I don't care what this feminist society is preaching. As a man, you're expected to figure it out. Mm. Be, make the money, make the bread, pow through it, be a strong emotionally and mentally. It doesn't mean you can't have weak moments. Guys, get this twisted. Of course, yeah. you can have weak moments. We're human. We're human beings. But at the same time, you have to understand, being a man, you got to figure it out, bro. Mm-hmm. You got to figure it out. I that's agree. that's what it is, you know? And it's always going to be like that. No matter how feminized America becomes, it's always going to be like that as the man, brother. It's always going to be like that. Don't, yeah. don't buy into this lie we're being sold and been told women and men are the same. We're not the same. And you know, I know we're not the same because society does not treat men and women the same. Uh-huh. It doesn't, bro. It, do, it, it just does not. Yeah. It does not. If you're a man and you come crying to your homies about whatever problem, they're going to be like, hey, bro, I'm sorry you're going through that. You want to have, that's another thing. You want to have uh, good relationships with other men. Yeah. But they're going to, they're going to, when my, when my buddies come to me crying about women, I'm like, I have empathy. But at the end of the day, before that, I hang up that phone. I'm like, man up, go out, meet new women. Yeah. It's no crying over here. You know, we can cry for a little bit, but we man up. Yeah. We grab our balls and we're proactive, brother. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. that's how, that's how it is. I, I agree 100 percent that uh and what I want to add on to that too is like even though on the outside if I don't know if a dude's listening to this and they're not working, it I think society makes it seem like work is terrible. But if you're good at what you do and you like what you do, the work is fulfilling. Mm-hmm. And so as you like what I'm trying to I'm being proactive about like almost every year of my life now, I'm trying to see if there's anything I'm not being proactive about so I can fix it. Right. Uh, but as you as you're leveling up, this might be network. This is also what they teach network marketing. As you're leveling up in life, like it, it's fulfilling for a guy. Like you, we derive fulfillment from work and from productivity. I think. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you this: you're one thousand percent correct. Let me tell you, uh, real estate usually gets uh, slow around this time mm-hmm. because it's the holidays. Nobody's selling property. Nobody wants to yeah. move. It just slows down. Stuff like yeah. that. Uh, who's trying to move like during Christmas? Like that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nobody does it. Right? It's nobody bit, does it. Rough. It's rough, bro. And let me tell you something. I've never been more slightly depressed in my life mm. because I'm not working because I'm not I have to keep myself busy. Mm. I have to study my Spanish. I have to I have to uh, work out. I have to keep myself busy because I'm, I'm not I'm not working, bro. And I feel like men are happiest when they work. This is in our DNA mm-hmm. when working, bro, from from caveman times. Yeah. This is what men do. And work is it's 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 what drives men. It would it's it's what Helped us men build civilizations. Women didn't build that. I love women. No disrespect. I don't want this to seem like this is women bash. I love women to the T, to the core. But I'm saying men are different. have built civilizations. Men built Rome. Men built Greece. Men built all these great civil. Why? Because that's in our DNA. That's what we do, brother. That's we we go to battle. This is why men love sports. It's mm-hmm. just the battle of it. It's just the masculinity of it. 
Yeah. You know, and 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 work is mass. It's it's women can work too, but it's it, it hits our masculine core for a man. Mm-hmm. If a man doesn't like to work, there's something off with him. There's something yes. off with that brother. Because man, we we do. Even if you take a vacation and you relax a little bit, because sometimes that's called for. Just mm-hmm. sometimes yeah. you need to R&R chill out and rest. Yeah. Yeah, you After need like that, right? Three or four days, you're like, I need to freaking. Do oh, something, for dude. sure. Like, <laughs> for sure. You go crazy, bro. You go crazy. You're yeah. thinking about work. You're like, okay, man. Like, all right, all right. Like, all right. I'm, I'm here with the wife. You want to be in the moment. But you're thinking about work. You mm. love work. If, yeah. Especially if you like what you do. And oh, it doesn't yeah. even, like, what I do, it doesn't even feel like work. I love mm-hmm. it. Yeah. I love it. So it's like, dude, if I don't do it, I'm like, I was, I, I was like yesterday, like, damn, I'm slightly depressed. <laughs> Because I'm not working, bro. Yeah. I go out, I play basketball, I do all oh, that's great. All oh, that's fine, that's dandy. Bro, nothing like work, man. Mm-hmm. Nothing like work. Work and then accomplishing things like in the workplace too, I think. Just, that's when it's like, oh, it's fucking solid. Accomplishing things like what? I'm sorry, Brooklyn. I was going to say, like, uh, when you're like after you've accomplished something too, that's that's freaking solid. And I think that probably comes back for like after you, in caveman times, when they hunted that buffalo and they brought that back, that's probably like, dude, this is... Everyone's eating because I, I'm the one with the bone arrow that brought this thing down. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Or after you conquer, like when you, you know, when, yeah, 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 when Rome took over certain parts of you know, and they expanded their empire, like you're like, yeah, we conquered it. That is that's just it's just a masculine thing, like you know. Yeah. So yeah, it's so funny. It's like I was this guy, one of this guy, uh, he's in uh, in my real estate thing. He's one of these gurus Mm -hmm. and he's been with his wife for like 25 years and Mm -hmm. they have literally, they have eight kids. That's a lot of kids. I have have seven in our family. That's so I'm saying that's a lot of kids. (laughs) Yeah. That's a a ton of kids. And uh, his name is Jerry, Jerry Norton. And he put this post on his IG and he was talking about, you know, these are some steps to make a a relationship last for 25 years. Mm. And it was all stuff I agree with. He he was, and but one thing was interesting was he was like, he said like number four or five was my wife doesn't belong to me. A lot of times I tell my wife, uh, "You're mine, you're mine," and my, my my and my wife tells me I'm not yours. And she's not wrong, but I wrote in the comments, "Well, that's the masculine thing to say mm-hmm. when a man is provides for all eight of his kids and he's rich." It's like, yeah, this this is my woman, and it's not that men mean like you belong to me, you're my yeah. property, you're my dog. I'm your it's owner, or just, whatever. Yeah. yeah, it's just a masculine thing. It's like this is my woman, those are my kids, this is my kingdom. Mm-hmm. You know, I I own my kingdom. I don't own these people. Like, so it's the woman yeah. and the children are part of the king. It's just a masculine thing to say. It's not literal, right? If a yeah. guy thinks that literally, I then he's like, Puff, then yeah. he's like Puff Daddy doing crazy, crazy <laughs> stuff. And you never want to be that way because that's a, from a place of insecurity. Yeah. But when a man says that and thinks that, that's all it means. That It's just a masculine trait, right? It's like, I, I, I own, this is my woman. These are my children. And it's, it comes from a thing of being protective, right? Mm-hmm. Men, we like to provide and we, we like, like to protect. protect. Yeah, big time. You know, oh, breaking up. A little my bit. grandpa was in his uh, 70s and, oh, can you hear me? My grandpa, dude, to the day he died, he had a gun. He had a gun. Mm-hmm. And I'll be like, Grandpa, why do you, why you have a gun? He's like, I'll protect my family by any means. Yep. That's what he was saying. I'll protect I- my family by any means. Any means. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen my IG, but I fully agree with that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Me too, bro. I'm, a, I'm, I'm pro-gun like a mug. I'm like, yeah. dude, I'm pro-gun like a mug because it's like, you're not going to come into my household. Oh, dude. And yeah. and, and think you're going to do whatever you want to do to my family. I want it to die for my family. This is my family. Mm-hmm. Uh, very, yeah. I'm very much the same way where it's like, you have, if, if you have... Number one, it's hard to get to this where I live specifically. And also, like, as I was scanning the house, I was like, where are the defensive positions here I can take up in case someone breaks? <laughs> like, I have this, I have this thought out. And um, I practice fairly regularly, too. So it's it's like if you're coming in here thinking this is going to be easy, you have to be pretty <laughs> fucking good. <laughs> I love it. I love it, bro. And that's why, and that's also why you do, uh, I think you do ta- Taekwondo, right? Yeah. I did that as like uh, competition stuff. And then I got into guns later, but. There was a, yeah. Oh, there was a there's a great quote actually by one of the guys who who used to one of my coaches in Taekwondo, and this yeah. I think speaks to the masculine frame where it was like it was my first ever like pistol class and I was learning how to use it and whatever, and he walked right. up just because we had a relationship before he's like, um, I I need you to like your 
this is your your line of defense. This is the weapon you will use to defend your family. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's, that makes sense. And he's like, understand if the bad guy gets past you, he does whatever he wants to your family. And I was like, that makes that also makes sense. But most people don't think about the dark. Like if you're not prepared, like this is the dark t- truth of what could happen. Those are all facts. And and I'm and not going to ask my wife to stand up and be like, oh, you fight him. Like, no, I'm no. going to fucking handle that. <laughs> And, 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 exactly. That's you're the rock. You're the yeah. protector and the provider. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 whether you, I don't know if you're conscious of this or not. It's like even taking a martial art. It's like, hey, if we're out in public, this is some shit go down. Oh yeah. I know how to defend my family, mm-hmm. right? It, it, and it, maybe it's not even a conscious thing, but it's like you learn these things as an. And it makes you feel more masculine. I tell all my students, and I and I do this myself, like. Dude, take a martial art. Learn, yeah. learn how to shoot. Because mm-hmm. number one, not only you know how to protect yourself and your family, it's gonna make you feel more masculine because oh, yeah. that's ingrained in us as men. Yeah. You gotta yeah. understand. This is this is the thing about feminism. You gotta understand. I heard Tony Robbins say this. The, okay. the mind, you gotta understand the mind that we have, the brain, is mm-hmm. like two, three million years old. Yeah. You have to understand that from evolution every time, right? Yeah. So that protector and that vi- the, uh, that protector and that provider right, is still in there. That that's bro, and it's never going to go away. It's ingrained in us because we men we needed it to survive. Yeah. Especially back in caveman times because now you had threats from other cavemen. You mm-hmm. see this uh who would kill who would try to kill your family, kill your babies and take your woman. Yeah. Because the lifespan was short. Mm-hmm. And there were not, there were not a lot of women around. You see this. I don't know if you watch Animal Planet. I love the Animal Planet and I, these I animals. Animal Planet, yeah, bro. If you see this, this and and uh, if you still see this in like lions and bears, and mm-hmm. they do this, especially lions. If a lion, they they have the cubs, right? Yeah. And then they have the main lion, the main the main alpha with the mane. Yeah. And then he has the lionesses. Yeah. The main job. Here's what's fascinating. The lionesses are the ones that go out and hunt and take care, take care of the, uh, take care of the babies. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It's not, it's, it's, it's not the lion. It's not the main alpha lion. What is? If you watch this, he mainly he'll he'll go out and hunt with the lionesses from time to time. Okay. But he mainly protects the children and the lionesses from other lions that try oh. to come in and try to come in and kill their babies. And have sex with the women because as soon as the babies get killed, the the lionesses go into heat immediately, mm. and they can have babies. So they showed wow. on Animal Planet where this actually happened, where two lions came in. the The main lion had become weaker; he had become older, oh, and he yeah. couldn't protect. So the main these new lions came in, and they literally killed every one of the yes. the main lion's baby. Take yeah. the neck. Killed them all, right? Went, had sex with the lionesses and had babies. So I say that to say it's that's ingrained. We're, look, people think, look, humans, we're animals, bro. You, oh, no, we're not. We're more sophisticated. Okay, we are. But at our core, we're animals. This is ingrained in us. And so, so that protector and provider stuff, it's not going anywhere. So I say all that to say when you do that uh, MMA stuff, you learn a martial art, you learn how to shoot guns, you want to tap into that. And it's gonna you're gonna become more attractive to your woman. Mm-hmm. You're gonna become more attractive to to because it's like ooh, anything that's masculine with a feminine woman, it's like ooh for her, it's like ooh. yeah, you know. <laughs> there's um, I spe- like speaking of masculine stuff. So I agree with that 100. percent And like, there's, I do feel most alive. Uh, I'd say almost like when I'm sparring or when I'm like training mm-hmm. hard and I'm hitting the bags hella hard and I mm-hmm. fucking love it. Uh, <laughs> Speaking of that masculine thing where women are like, ooh, uh, yeah. there's, I'm on TikTok now just because I'm trying to learn how to social, the whole social media game. So I'm on the platform. And there's this sure. guy with million, I think it's like he has millions of likes. And all he does is he stands outside. He's got this lumberjack stuff on. He got a short sleeve shirt. He's ripped. He has a well trimmed beard and he just cuts wood. And all the comments are women. Like, I, I don't know what the text says. I've watched this 10 times. I don't know what the text says. And I was like, <laughs> This is so interesting because I'm I, whenever I'm looking around for formats, like what's this guy's mm-hmm. format? How does he cut the videos? And then mm-hmm. I thought I was like, how are the thousands of comments? And it's all just I don't even know what the text said. I've seen this twenty times. <laughs> it, it's literally <laughs> just wood on a thing, and you just bah! 
and then like repeatedly it's it's crazy to me <laughs> there's no denying if look man again i don't mean to harp on feminism mm. the, there's no denying a woman there's no rewiring a woman's feminism this is the problem with the western world right they're trying so hard to make women masculine but the problem is Bro, it's ingrained. Again, our brain is millions of years old. Yeah. It's ingrained in them, bro. If my friend is so funny, he's like, I taught him, I was like, hey, dude, you need to do this. You need to be more masculine. He changed his behavior. Dating, we're masculine as soon as almost instantaneously. Why? Because this is ingrained in women. They are. They're a, a, a truly heterosexual woman is attracted to the masculine. They don't even know why. They can't even explain it. Like they said on, like you said on the TikTok comment, bro. It's ingrained. It's it's like seeing a beautiful woman walk yeah, by you. Just, okay. She got the shape. She got the yeah. breast. She got the ass, bro. You can't help yourself. You're like, Bing! Yeah. you're just automatically attracted to it. There's no, there's no logic to it. Yeah. For a split second, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. You better I mean, have glasses on yeah, when you're yeah. with your lady. You know? Yeah, my some guys won't admit to it, but I think it's it's true. It's just like if she were like, let's say she's getting out of a car in your in your vision or whatever for for a split second. Even if guys are catching themselves, it's like, and then you're like back in the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Can't help it. Can't help it. And same thing with them. Uh, I've seen this all the time, where uh, especially in LA, a guy will be jogging with his shirt off because mm. it's hot, and he'll be all cut up, yeah. and women will just be like. I see women do it. They mouth like, open. Damn. Yeah. Oh yeah. They'd be like, damn. damn. Like, dude, they can't. They can't help it. If a woman is truly feminine, she can't help it, bro. Mm -hmm. She can't. Even if she's masculine, her feminine just. She can't help it, bro. It's like, it's like trying to make a lion not uh, chase down a zebra when they see a zebra, bro. It's in their DNA to chase down the zebra, bro. This is they're hunters. They're yeah. they're uh, they're predators. This is what they do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, it's like guys used to be like, man, how, how, how is it that you can, I mean, to cut you off, I'll just finish. Oh, this. Yeah. Guys would be like, how can you just go up to a woman? Cause they'll see me in person. And they'd be like, how can you just go up to a woman? Just be direct and just give her a compliment. And she responds to that. Hmm. They'd be like, I, and I would tell them, oh, all I say is, I thought you were cute. I had to come and say hello. And they'd be like, that doesn't work. I'm like, okay, let's go to the mall. Yeah, well, and I'll, and, and they'll be like, and it's like, why, bro? It's that masculine energy. Mm -hmm. It's here I am. I'm a man. I'm not afraid of rejection. I can handle rejection. You're an attractive woman. I want to meet you. And whether you like me or not, I'm okay with that because I'm a man and I can handle it. And if you don't like me, I'm going to just go talk to another woman, but I want to meet you. That's masculine energy. It just oozes off of you. And women are just attracted to it like a magnet. They can't help it. That's why it works. There's no gimmicks. There's no tricks. You know, it's yeah. just being masculine. Mm -hmm. I, would, uh, I was, I was going to comment, but you, you, you commented on it, uh, on that really motivational speech there. Is that <laughs> <laughs> got hype, bro? I got hype listening to you. Uh, one of the things was like, was like for, I think for those guys who were asking, like, how can you do that and like have them respond to you? It's like they're, they're already expecting the, the reaction, which is not good. It's like, you're up there. This is how I feel. It's kind of like what they said in the book. Say how you feel and not, not anything more. Like you don't need right. that. It's right. Like 100%. And it's magic. very it's very feminine to go up to a woman and seek validation. That's very feminine. Mm. It's not yeah. attractive. You know, I would tell my friend like dude, being good with women is is a is is it's um it's behavior based. It's not look based. It's not status based. Mm. It's behavior based. Again, uh let's look at a guy like Will Smith. He's not a very masculine dude. I yeah. love Will Smith. And not very masculine dude. Why? Because if his wife can do what she does with, to him, disrespect him in public, treat him any old way, he's not a very masculine dude. She doesn't respect him. At the end of the day, she doesn't respect yeah. him. And you want your woman to respect you more than she loves you. That's mm -hmm. so counterintuitive, but it's true, man. Because a woman could be in love with a man, but disrespect him. Yeah. And then the whole house is going to fall down because she's feeling sad. It's all... It's all falls down. Your woman has to respect you more than she loves you. And you don't hear that in mainstream society, mm -hmm. but this is what works. This is what my, all the women that I've dated, they all say that I respect you. Mm -hmm. I respect your discipline. I see what you do. 
um, with your business. It's so funny that girl that I broke up with, she would see me working and she would come and try to distract me and she'll be like, oh, well, you're not paying attention to me and I'm in this room waiting for you and I'm working, right? D deals are coming through. I told her, let me tell you something. This is what I told her directly. I said, don't. I said, I, I said, I told her, I, um, what did I say? I said, I, uh, I resent you talking to me like that. This is work and I'm going to spend time with you. But right now this is work. I resent you talking to me like that immediately. She's like, and women will test you. This is the thing. This goes back to testing. Yeah. But I've been here in this room for a couple of hours and you haven't been tamed. I, I understand that. We're going to go to Austin. We're going to take a trip. Already got everything planned out, but I'm working right now. Mm. I resent how you're talking to me. It's the end of the conversation. I'm going to go back to work. And so it's like this This is women. And she respected that the whole rest of the weekend. Her behavior was beautiful. Yeah. And and women yeah. respect that, man. Like women have to respect you. Because you set the boundary. Man. Have to, That's it. We're not operating have to, this. man. More than they love you. Because there's like. There's people in my family that I love and love me, but they don't respect me. Uh -huh. See, that's the thing. You can love somebody but not respect them. Respect is so much more powerful than love. And you, in, in a relationship, you want to have both, but the respect has to be higher. Because when your wife respects you, there's just certain things she's not going to do to you. There's just a certain way she's not going to talk to you, and she's just not going to behave a certain way because she knows it's just not tolerated. And it's not about being domineering and, you better do what I say. We're not yeah. on all that. We're, we're not Puff Daddy. We're not trying to do all that. <laughs> we're, not, we're not trying to. That's weak, right? Yeah. When men do that, that's from a place of weakness. We're talking about coming from a place of strength where it's like, I love you, but this is my mission and this is my boundary. And you have to respect me in order to continue this relationship with me or we don't need to be together. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so, and it's not like I'm going to divorce you immediately if you're married. But the, your wife has to know that there's boundaries. She has to respect you. And again, it goes back to conditioning. We, we train people how to treat us. Yeah. And yeah, you're yeah, constantly, yeah. It, people don't like that word, but you're constantly training your kids yeah, how to treat you. you. Yep. yep. You're constantly training your woman how to treat you. You're constantly training business associates how to treat you. Mm -hmm. You're constantly doing that, man, by what you will or won't um, put All up right. with, especially in relationships. Yeah. Uh, I, I agree also. And then one of the things that I'm, maybe people in the audience have questions on is how would you go about building respect? Yeah. Uh, well, better respect. Number one is just number one boundaries. Mm -hmm. Number two, having respect for yourself. Yeah. I, there, there, there's, I uh, how do you have respect for yourself? Being disciplined, mm -hmm. uh, waking up uh, early, mm -hmm. um, staying consistent with your workout, staying consistent in your business. Mm -hmm. um, because here's the thing. What you say, what you do, and what your wife or your girlfriend or your kids see you do, that's what really is going to garner their respect. Yeah. Because I know a lot of men, they're like, my woman's going to respect me. She's going to respect me. And, they're, and they, they have nothing going for yourself. And, and that works for a little bit. But after a while, trust me, your woman's going to say, who are you? Mm -hmm. You're lazy. You're fat. You don't have nothing going for you. Trust yeah. me. What, what job do you have? You Trust me. Before I was the man I am now. And. I'm still getting better. I haven't made it. Yeah. Dude, some of the women that I dated, they said that shit to me. Mm -hmm. They're like, and so that's how you build respect. You build respect, number one, by having boundaries. But number two, your life. Mm -hmm. Your life. People yeah. look at your life and they respect you. When you look at a bum, you have empathy, but you don't have respect for him. And, and I mean, you want to be respectful because people are people. But if, would you take business advice from a homeless man or business advice from Bill Gates? Yeah. Why? Because you have respect for Bill Gates, what he's built, the mm -hmm. company he's built. The, you have respect. Not even Bill Gates. Let's say you have the local businessman who's successful. Who yeah. do you respect? Him, the homeless guy or the businessman? Mm -hmm. Right? And, and it's the same thing with your woman. She's going to look at what are your actions. That's how you build respect and by your boundaries. That's it. It's not really that complicated. Mm -hmm. I agree. I just wanted I wanted to fill you in on like or get yeah. your opinion on it. My opinion also is like if you want respect, you need to do things that build your own self respect first. Because if you don't, if you're tolerating it in your own life with yourself, then how are you going to tell someone else to tolerate it, like to, that you're not tolerating it? Exactly. So it, a, exactly, exactly. It's all. It's all. And, and when you do that, again, it always goes back to this. You build 
confidence and self-esteem. Mm -hmm. That and that that is the core of it. And when it comes to women in dating, most men are of low self-esteem and of low confidence. Mm -hmm. So from the beginning, your your woman's not going to respect you. And this is why I tell men, single men, do go out and do code approach. I, I know it's hard, but do it because it builds confidence and self-esteem. So even if you meet a woman who, let's say you meet her at work, because most people meet through friends, family, work, understand this. Let's say you do meet her. Now when you meet her, you, you, you've built that core confidence and self-esteem. And here's the, here's the thing. Guys don't understand. They think I'm successful in business. Let's say a guy, you meet, a, I've coached these guys, lonely millionaires, guys who are successful in business. Uh -huh. It doesn't transfer over. It doesn't, guys think, oh, I have money and I have fame. And no, if that was true, let's look at Will Smith. Let's look at Tom Brady. <laughs> Let's look at Diddy. Let's see all the shit he's gotten into lately. I think Steve let's Harvey. Look at, yeah, you can add Steve Harvey to that list now. I think Steve, let's, look at Steve, let's look at Steve Harvey. Yeah. Having money and status does not translate to having confidence and self-esteem, period. And it does not translate to having confidence and self-esteem with women. It does not. We've been fooled as a society. This is why when a guy says, you never leave, lose money chasing women, you lose money, whatever that stupid saying mm -hmm. is, dude, it's stupid because, okay, you get the money, but you you still have no women. And then if you do have the women that you do get are gold diggers and they don't like you for you. They want your money. And yeah. if you were to ever lose that money because money comes and goes, you're mm -hmm. done. Yeah. You're done. I had a guy say, man, when my money stopped coming in, my doorbell stopped ringing. I said, and that's your fault. He didn't like that. Mm -hmm. I said, and that's your fault, bro, because you never built true confidence to self-esteem. Chris, I'm telling you, brother, Drop me in any mall, any bar, any club. Oh, I believe. It. I don't have to be dressed. I don't have to be dressed that. I don't have to be dressed that well. Yeah. My hair won't even have to be. I'm balding. My hair <laughs> won't even have to be. Good. I'm bald. I'm a, I'm five nine. Mm. I'm leaving with numbers, and I'm gonna leave with a date. Give mm. me a couple of hours. Just yeah. me, bro. Why? Because I have self 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 esteem and confidence. I love and like myself. And that's mm. where it starts. As corny as it sounds, you gotta love and like yourself first. Then you can love and like Someone your else? women. Yeah. A woman and children. Yeah, I you can I never. Agree with that. You know what I mean? Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, oh, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. But I, no, I, no, no, no. I, uh, I was gonna say I, I agree. Like, uh, if you're not happy with yourself, then being in a relationship is like trying to have them make you happy, which is not good. Either either way, like whether you're, you're a dude or a chick, you got to love yourself. First. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like being in a relationship, but not having. Esteem and confidence, bro. It's like driving a Bentley, but you don't you don't have no gas. You can't afford the gas. You you have no gas. You're going mm -hmm. nowhere, bro. Yeah. You, you, you you're going you're going. It's veneer. It's veneer. And every guy I know, I'm telling you, Chris. Every guy I know, they get the little skills. Every guy that I've taught it, this this and this happened to me. You get a little bit of skills with women. Let's say you start going out, you get a little bit of skills with women. Yeah. But you still have the same uh like your it's inner obvious. game is weak as mm -hmm. far as like you're still needy and clingy. You lose every woman that you meet. Mm. You lose them all. Why? Because they can just feel it. Because it feels weird. Yeah, because you can attract. Because again, you have you have. It's not true confidence. You have you have a you have a technique, but technique mm. is not mm. enough. You have technique, but you don't have the inner game, mm. right? So you got that technique, but when a woman gets to know you after one or two dates, or maybe even you guys yeah. even have sex, it, maybe you guys even have sex. But now you're needy and clingy. You lose it. And I'm telling you because that happened to me mm. for like six months. I'm like, I got these techniques. I got these. I can get a woman now. I can get a phone number, but I can't keep them around. Yeah. I can't keep them around. And that's the thing. Women are so good at that. They're like, all right, this dude is like, going nowhere. Just, yeah. <laughs> they just, bro, they just, again, you can be anything except needy and clingy. Mm. And, and that's a lack of. That's a lack of inner game, right? It's like I, want, I like to use a sports analogy since we both play sports. I play basketball. Mm. It's like, and I'm five nine, and there were players taller than me, brother, six ten, six six, six five, six yeah. three, and I would beat them. I was better than them all day long. Why? Because I had that inner confidence. Mm. They had the talent, but they never developed themselves, mm. right? But I developed myself. I worked on my skill set. They were just going cruising off of talent, and talent is not enough. And that's the thing. Technique is not enough. Mm -hmm. It's important, mm -hmm. but it's not enough. To keep yeah. the woman, you need that inner self-esteem and confidence. Because, look, when you have a beautiful woman, dude, other, other guys are going to hit on her. Can yeah. you handle that? 
other guys are going to be after. Are you confident in your, in your core to be like, who? That's one thing my ex loved about me and all the women that I've dated recently. And they tell me this directly. They're like, dude, you're so secure. You're, you're so secure. And I remember one of the girls I was dating, this Armenian girl. Mind you, I'm 35. She was 23, 22, 23. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I, I date in 20s, 30s, whatever. And she's like, uh, oh, I'm going out with my friends. Is that okay? I'm like, I don't care. Do your thing. She's like, my ex would like, he would be so insecure about it. I'm like, I'm not your ex. I don't care. If you don't want to be with me, fine. I'll find somebody else. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit here and babysit you. Yeah. And that comes from core confidence and self-esteem. Because number one, I know I can go out and meet somebody else. And number two, I know if a woman cheats on me or whatever, that has nothing to do with me. Mm. I'm still a great person. I'm still my charismatic self. Yeah. I still love myself. No woman can tear me down. When I broke up with my ex, I was hurt, of course. I was hurt. It hurt me. Mm. And of course, I'm a human being. But dude, like two weeks later, I met somebody else. Right. And, yeah. and, and, and that doesn't mean she didn't mean anything to me because we're still friends. And I tell her I still tell her I love her because I do. I'm not going to say I don't know. Of course, we had a beautiful life together. I build relationships with her children. I still talk to her children. So but it's like I wasn't devastated. And you can yeah. tell by a man's self-esteem and confidence if his if his relationships were to end, how devastated is he? Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you're not hurt, but it's like, are you completely devastated and your life stops? Yeah. Or are you hurt, but you can keep going? Mm -hmm. And to me, that's the difference between a masculine man. He's, I'm hurt, but I can keep going. I can meet somebody new. Sorry. I, I just no, love this shit. So yeah. I know I, I can go on. Sorry, bro. Good, I love feel it. free to cut me off. Sometimes I talk no, too much. I'm it's, sorry. It's good. Um, I did have a, a question, though. So in, in the red pill manosphere space, um, going out, your woman going out while she's t dating you is like a red flag. And they're like, that she's for the streets like that's the sure <laughs> yeah. what what i was sure. wondering what your take is on that i think it's all context it depends like uh if you're married look dude look your woman needs girlfriends yeah she has to have that just like us as men we need to have our men time mm -hmm. away from our our children and our women mm -hmm. your you. lady needs to have Post female time. time yeah if she goes out once a month so what mm -hmm. so what If she's your, if y'all married, yeah. she and y'all have children, she's not gonna be going out every weekend anyway, yeah. right? So, but if she goes out once a month, so what? Dude? She needs that time with her girlfriends. Let her go blow off some steam and go to the bar in the club. So what? Who cares? If mm. it doesn't matter, right? Now, if she's doing it every weekend and she's acting like she's single, that's a whole different thing. That's a whole different thing. Mm. But it's like if she's going out here and there, so what, dude? She needs that time with her girlfriends. You know, within. Yeah. Uh, within the marriage, it doesn't matter. Now, if you guys are dating, you're just casually dating. She could, a woman could do what she wants. Yeah, I, that's I her business. <laughs> She's not my girlfriend. I tell, her, hey, we're, we're, you're not my girlfriend. You can do what you want. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not cuffing you. If you're lady, if you now, if you're my woman, you're my girlfriend. You can still go out. But if your if your woman is of, of high quality, here's here's a, here's the remedy to this. Mm -hmm. If your woman is of high quality and she loves you. She's not gonna want to go out to the bars and clubs anyway. I know. I, I was so, asking for the for the audience because my woman. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know you're asking <laughs> for the audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm speaking to the audience. Yeah, hundred percent. If, you, if take, you're take notes, them, gentlemen, take notes. If you're <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're bro, if if you're if you're if you're communicating emotionally, and you speak and you know how to speak woman needs, mm -hmm. your woman is not even gonna want to go out with her girlfriends that much. Yeah, she's gonna want to be around with you. It may come to the point where you have to tell her, baby, go out with your friends. Mm -hmm. because that's how much time she wants to spend with you. She's not going to do that. And if don't choose women who go out to the bars and the clubs a lot. That, that, that's how I, you I alleviate that's easiest, that. Yeah, that's the easiest solution. Is... <laughs> <laughs> just don't go. choose. Just don't. All the women that I dated long term, like my 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 ex fiance and even the woman I dated after her, they don't, they're not, on, they're not very active on social media. Mm -hmm. They're not, they're not, showing thongs and all the skin on social media. Yeah. They don't go out to the bars and clubs that often. Like my ex, she would, she would go out maybe once a month with her girlfriends. That's okay. She mm. got to have friends. Damn. I, yeah. I, I know that red pill stuff can be a You're little right. extreme sometimes yeah. when the, the guys, I heard one guy, no, nah, uh, never let her go out, have her friends come over to the house. They don't need to go to a club ever. I'm like, dude, stop it. Get out of here. It's nuts. <laughs>
Bro, that's to me, that's from a place of insecurity. Mm -hmm. If my lady wants to go out once a month, be with her girlfriend, fine, bro. If your woman loves you, she ain't gonna cheat. And if you speak womanese, most men can't speak womanese, she ain't gonna cheat. Even if a celebrity or a rich man comes by, she's not gonna cheat. Women are much more loyal than guys think. Do women cheat? Yes. But they're much more loyal. When a woman's in love, uh, they I from my experience, they don't really cheat like that. Men, 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 men are more susceptible to cheating because that's just in our DNA. We want to spread our DNA. That's that's ingrained in us. Mm -hmm. Women, when they're in love, they don't really I I have from my experience. It's, everybody's experience is different, yeah. but I've approached 10,000 women, so I'm just saying, and I've been in relationships with a lot of women, I find when a woman is really in love with you, she doesn't cheat. If a woman cheats, it's, it's not out of pleasure. Men cheat out of pleasure. A man, we're different. We can cheat, but go home and we still love our wife. We don't love the other women. The other women are just sex. We can mm -hmm. compartmentalize. Yeah. When a woman cheats, she cannot compartmentalize. She has feelings for this guy. Mm -hmm. She's out of love with you. Yeah. She doesn't feel yeah. anything for you. Men and women are different this way. But if your woman loves you, there's no need to be paranoid. And if you're paranoid, dude, just don't choose a woman who goes to the clubs. That's, and this is what I'm saying about screening. Mm -hmm. Get to know a woman for three to six months. Look at her habits. Does she go to the club a lot? This, yeah, so when you, you get with her, you have, yeah. yeah, when you get with her, you don't have to be paranoid. You ain't got to check her phone. You ain't got to check her IG. You don't have to do any of that because you screened her out. You're like, okay, she's not like that. She hasn't been with a lot of, she hasn't had sex with a lot of men. She, she, she doesn't go out to the bars and clubs a lot. Hmm. She, she has a career or whatever, right? Whatever you're, whatever. I always whatever tell guys, right of stuff. yeah, write oh. down what you Go ahead. Yes, I we advise that so often. My my wife mm. will help these women who are single, and I'll sometimes are these guys will ask also, and it's like, what's step one of like entering the dating market? Have a list of the values you want in the person. That's it. Yes, <laughs> because it's the law of attraction, right? Mm -hmm. And focus on what you do want. What do you yeah. What do you want? Mm -hmm. Right. I have a list. I have my list right in front of me, and it's like not in front of me on my little notes there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is what I want, right? It's like, okay, I want a woman in her mid twenties. I want her to be fit. I want her to be uh, uh, slim, thick. I want her to go to the gym. I want her to eat healthy because why? Because I intermittent fast. I don't go to diet. I work out. So that's I want the lifestyles to match. Mm -hmm. I want her to be funny. She has to have a sense of humor because I've been with women who don't have a sense of humor. I hate it. Uh, she has to be intelligent. Uh, it is just boring for me. Yeah, she yeah. has to be intelligent. She has to be intelligent. Um, she has to be intelligent, and she has to she has to be feminine because I want to have children, and I need a woman who's very motherly. Mm. Th th these are these are my so when I so when I go out and I'm meeting women, it's like okay, this woman is just a casual dating. This woman is long long. This woman is long term. This woman is not, she doesn't meet anything. So now you're screening naturally, yeah. right? People just go out and I meet who I meet. No, have standards, man. Yeah. I like what Tony yeah. Robbins says. How do you, how do you, how do you change your life? Raise your standards, bro. Mm, that's a good Raise one. Raise your standards, bro. That's a good I tell I was I, I got into it with my friend the other day. I didn't get into it with him because I don't argue with people. But I told him, he's like sending me these girls and she's so beautiful. I'm like, dude, no, she's not. And, it, and he's like, well, how could you say that? I'm like, bro, let me tell you something. I said, be, I've seen this a thousand times. Because you're filth, because you have fear, the women that are not that attractive, you think they're attractive because you're afraid to talk to the attractive women. Mm. You're lowering your standards. Mm. Dude, raise your standards. Yeah. When you raise your standards, now, now it's like, oh, okay, like I, ha I have to step. People don't want to raise the standards because they have to step their game up. Yeah. It it's causes like, them to be more accountable. Yeah. It's harder to talk to an eight, nine, or a ten, and these are just rankings that they use. An eight, nine, or a ten, than it is a six, a five, or six, or a seven. Why? Because as a man, you're not intimidated by a five or six or a seven in the in the looks department. Mm -hmm. These are very shallow things, I know, but I'm just using the terms. It's harder to talk to an eight, nine, or a ten because you got to deal with your fear, you got to deal with your insecurity, mm -hmm. right? You got to deal with all the excuses you have. Yeah. So it's harder. So you lower your standards. So you tell yourself the six looks like uh looks like a uh, Beyonce. You tell yourself that. You know damn well she doesn't. Why? Because mm -hmm. your standards, bro, it's fear and your raise your standards, bro. Mm -hmm. Raise your standards, and that's how you change your life.
I like that a lot. Keep your standards high and or raise them. Raise them. You have better to. Results. Yeah. Yes, brother. Yes, yes. I, I like what Grant Grant Carter the ten x rule, man. Mm -hmm. The ten x rule. It's also like, good. dude. It's beautiful. It's like, dude. Do more. Do more. Do better. When you do more, you raise your standards. The ten x rule to me is basically like, raise your standards, bro. And when you raise your standards, go harder at it. Right? It's like I'm getting back into stand up comedy. I'm gonna. I live in San Antonio, but I'm moving to Austin because mm -hmm. the stand up comedy scene there is, is beautiful. And there's this guy I know. I took a stand up before, but I want to get back into it because yeah. I love it so much. Mm -hmm. And this guy I know is a teacher, and he's like, he's like Eric. Most people they get into stand up and they want to do it once a week. They want to go to an open mic. They want to dip their toe in it because they're scared, and they mm -hmm. do it once a week, and they expect they're going to become funny and they're going to master the craft. Mm -hmm. He said, Eric. You need to do it two or three times a day. You need to go to a city where they have a lot of open mics, which Austin they do. Austin is a great comedy city. Uh -huh. And then he said, you need to go two to three times a day to open mics. Okay. So nice. I, I went. I, I looked up the open mics. I have everything planned out. I'm like, okay, I'm going to this one at 730. I'm going to this one at 9. I'm going to this one at midnight. And every day I'm going to go. Uh -huh. How quick am I going to get good? at stand-up versus the person who only goes once a week and i'm doing it two or three times a day six days a week yeah you can't even you can't even compete with me uh -huh. right yeah and it's, it's 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 the same thing with 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 guys who are who are anything in life but guys yeah. who are starting out and trying to attract uh -huh. it's like if i have standards you can't even compete with me bro my if i have standards my quality of women is going to be higher than you if i have standards and I say, I'm going to go out and approach women, this many women, every weekend or every day. Dude, your, your, your dating and your love life and your woman needs is going to pale in comparison to the average man. Mm -hmm. So it's, I understand we have fear. I get that. It's not, I'm, I know it's hard, but it's like, bro, you got to push yourself. Because again, as men, you have to be proactive. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no uh, love loss for us as men. I, I agree. And uh, when you know, when you're talking about the uh, what's it called that stand up stuff, I was reminding me of, reminded me of my taekwondo days when I was like, I used to work out two to three times a day, six days a week. Um, right. And when people, because uh, we call them locals, even though sometimes they're local, not local, we have to drive to LA. It's just it's a, essentially a local is a tournament that doesn't have anything on the line, so it's not like right. a state tournament or nationals. Like when we go to locals, I'd listen to other people talk. They're like, oh yeah, I worked really hard. I trained like three times a week for the last few months for this, and I was like, that's hilarious <laughs> <laughs> like i did that i do what you would do a month and a day and a half like <laughs> exactly and, and 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 here's the thing like i was telling my friend i was like dude it's not like you have to do this forever because here's mm -hmm. the beautiful thing about momentum once you once you hit critical mass you yeah. hit momentum and let's say you do that for a year let's say you do that for six months mm -hmm. your skill set you know what they like you know how you know, yeah, it's yes, you know what they, yes, you know what they say. How do you how do you how do you succeed? Double your failure rate. I believe oh. in double when when I'm starting something, I believe in doubling and tripling my failure rate. I believe in that principle to my core. How can I fail That's fast, normal. fail often, and fail quick as possible? So, like with your taekwondo, like you were failing fast and often. Mm -hmm. So what's let's say you do that for six months, let's say you do that for a year. I always tell people, whatever you do, stick with it for a year. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm learning Spanish every day, multiple times a day. I'm doing my Spanish. I'm listening to my Spanish. I'm, I'm a talking to other people in Spanish. Yeah. Let's say I do that for a year. After a year, bro, sometimes sooner, but after a year, after six months, you're not going to you're not gonna have to work as hard mm -hmm. because the skill set is going to have caught up to you, and now you can do less with more. Right, you've okay. mastered it. Once you get to even semi mastery, it's now good. it's like okay, I don't have to go as hard. Yeah, I don't have to go as hard, and I still get the re same results as if I'm going as hard as I used to go. Mm. But, yeah. but people just don't want to pay the price, man. And as a man, if you don't want to pay the price, you're in Tough. trouble, bro. Women can get away <laughs> with that, but man cannot. Man cannot. Man cannot. If you want, if you don't want to pay the price in your relationships. If you don't want to learn how to communicate with your wife, 
If you don't want to learn how to communicate with your girlfriend, if you don't want to learn how to attract women, if you don't want to learn how to communicate with your children, dude, you're done as a man. You're yeah. toast. Yeah. Um, you're toast. You know, I've never heard a daughter say I have mommy issues, but I heard women say I have daddy issues. <laughs> Sorry, right, bro. Bro, that's, as a man, it's on us, bro. That's 100%. I've never heard that saying, but that's there's a reason I've never heard that. Bro, tell me, all the women that I've dated in my past who had any issues is always it always comes back to dad. Dude, as a man, dude, there's so much responsibility. As a man, we cannot afford to be passive, bro. It's a lot of responsibility on our shoulders and in our lap. Yeah. Dude, that was that was that's some solid knowledge, man. I mean, this whole thing has been fantastic and a lot of learning on my end and uh fucking awesome <laughs> <laughs> you know brother did i appreciate yeah. you um just for the sake of the i guess for any like i just for this okay i'm just gonna try and end the podcast and then we talk for a little bit after okay but okay sure yeah i'll, I'll cut it just because we're hitting like two hours and 30 minutes at two hours 20 okay. minutes yeah okay yeah, yeah no worries we got a lot of knowledge here um thank you guys for whoever was watching from either of our audiences or groups um Thank you for watching and i learned a lot i hope you guys are walking away with some tools and some mindset specifically that you can walk that you can enter either enter your relationship with or if you're still single you can have a better idea of how to sort for a high quality woman and you know how to speak better woman needs or have a better mindset when you're going into the dating world so it's not just this woman's here now i cannot be lonely because that that's horrendous <laughs> exactly exactly agree um, yeah well it was a pleasure talking to you eric and uh Talk to you later. I appreciate it, yeah. Chris. Pleasure is all mine.